Little Seagulls. Follow Chola. It's because they think sardines will be thrown into the sea. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, or tonight should actually be no, ladies and gentlemen, because this season, <laughs> this season is one that's been on my blacklist of ones I don't oh. really want to talk about. But sadly, as I said at the start with the Celtic years, I said we're going to talk about seasons, but it didn't quite go according to plan. Oh, and no, this man. one is up there as not going according to plan. But yeah, we shall obviously dig ourselves into the trenches, Russell Boyce, and we shall power on and go over the final Martin the Mule season, 2004-2005. Obviously, we're missing Liam tonight. He has got internet issues, unfortunately, and uh, oh. the technicians came to fix it, basically, as the bus has pulled up to the bus stop, so he can't make it. But don't worry, it's the original World Cup and Euros lineup that we did in the summer. It's myself and Russell. Mate, how are you tonight, my friend? I'm very well, Phil. I'm good, man. Just uh, just loving just loving being on the bus with, with the big man on a Friday night, especially when we're talking about... Well, Phil, you can do the noise. I'll do the I'll do the name because it's that month, mate. Oh yes, it is, of course. Aye, it, aye, is, aye. it is that month, and I just love talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. There's that claxon. Yeah, when the two of us all we can do it with sound and the picture, but when it's one, it's it's a bit hard. We Phil, need every month, in details. Every month for me is Martin O'Neill month. Every day of my life is Martin O'Neill <laughs> month. So this has been. This yeah. has been such an enjoyable series to be a part of. And I mean, I, you know, I know I've not done every show. I've done four, four out of five. Uh, and this is the toughest one, mate. And it oh. looks like it was only me and you with the cojones, mate, to, to, take, to, take, to take this on, you know? I don't know why I yeah. started there, like, fucking, I was like, eh, but in the words of a uh, Poggy Pig, a pay, 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 I don't know why I started there. But I, I mean, you know, we, we talk about the romance of Celtic. Um, mm. I feel... I feel the season that was snatched from us. Mm. Martin deserved a better finish. And I know, obviously, we don't start with the end, but yeah, it is a sad ending to a sensational, mm. a sensational, sensational era. Yes, indeed. And for the uh, a message to, I'm sure Bob McBall will be along soon. The H word is banned in the chat tonight. Okay, I don't want to hear about that type of vehicle that flies around in the sky, changing direction. That was banned this evening. I will try oh, not to say that at any point. He'll be loving it. <laughs> <laughs> he 
<laughs> you could say that the whole time when we were talking about money, I can't wait to the last season and putting the emojis <laughs> on that type of vehicle that begins you with know, an H. <laughs> we need to take it on the chin sometimes as well, though. I know. I mean, I know. It propelled them to greatness. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. I see. Very, That's very it. smart, my friend. Very, very good. Uh, but of course, before we proceed on, I will obviously go over all of the good stuff as I normally do. So, folks, yes. if you're new on the bus and you like the content you see, then obviously. Subscribe, we'd massively appreciate it. We're getting pretty close to 3,000 subscribers, Russell, at the last count, aren't we? The next milestone. So We are, we are closing in on it, mate. Closing in on it. And Good stuff. I think I was saying on the bus stop, you know, about the amount of views we've had the past couple of months. It's just a huge thanks, by the way, to everyone mm -hmm. who tunes in. Especially, mm -hmm. I think, I think this concept show, Phil, that you've done and you've been creating has been, it was a bold move by us to think that we had the right to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you see folk enjoying it so much, and it's just it's quality. But I every show has got its own me sort of identity now. This one more so than any other. Even you know, I think any any show I'm on, you've nailed this, mate. It's created in your your way. You've done a brilliant job with it, and it's a huge thanks to all all mm -hmm. the viewers, all the yeah. passengers as we call them, right. all of our teammates. Um, we're nearly at 3,000 in 11 months. I mean, right. fuck me, Phil. That's no one expected that, not even me. <laughs> Dude, mate, the bus is going places, mate. The bus is uh, out of control, nothing stopping it, man. Just momentum, forward momentum all the way, mate. And uh, yeah, fair play, man. It's done really, really well. But see the next milestone, 3,000, as uh, Monty says there. Massive thank you very much, Monty. Uh, but yeah, of course, Monty uh, doesn't dish out praise often, Phil. He so doesn't, by the way. We do. I <laughs> thanks, Monty. That is a rare, rare compliment from you. But yeah, one way that you can obviously help the bus to get a bit more traction again, because I keep saying it when it comes to algorithms, YouTube loves an interactive channel. So obviously if you hit the like button, if you get involved in our live comments or the comments under the video, and of course, if you wish to share it on your social media platforms, then that would be absolutely smashing. Now, Russell, obviously Liam's not here tonight. I've prepared a rather big trivia question to go out with a bang. Do you wish to take it on yourself? <laughs> yes, I'm born to take these on. This is my time. This Me is... I am, I am, I am so up for it. Oh I, man, I'm so up for doing it myself, mate. I'm fucking <laughs> shots fired, Phil. Good stuff, with my, mate. With my pen. Good you know, stuff. It'll be better than any other shots fired the night, mate. We've got some live. We've got the live commenters anyway, who will definitely jump in and help with the chat with the Gosh. answers anyhow, because there are eighteen answers, my friend. Eighteen different answers on this <laughs> one. <laughs> are you sure? Yeah, Do you wish to take this one by no, yourself? I'm ready, man. I'm ready, man. <laughs> okay, cool, man. So obviously, I try and find a question that's related to something that happened this season, and what I've come up with is. Celtic have been drawn against Barcelona, AC Milan, and Shakhtar a lot in Europe this century. Can you, however, name all the goal scorers against these teams across that time? <laughs> There's 18 <laughs> different Celtic goal scorers against right, right. Barcelona, Shakhtar, three, give me Shakhtar three teams. or right, AC two Milan. Sex, two sex. Yeah. Do you know I've got? I, I've ever told you. See when I'm writing down. Uh -huh. So see my work, obviously with COVID and stuff. Mm -hmm. They they provided me with this monitor that I'm looking at. So I've got my laptop over here. This big monitor. They they provide me with that for free. And they give us a white desk. I'm like, what the fuck does a white desk mean? A white like, desk, you know, yeah. It's an old school. So mm -hmm. you can just write on it and wipe it off. Yeah. So I don't need pen and paper, so that's why I'm always in a felt-tip pen. Not because, oh, I mean, wow. usually I write with crayons, to be honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's Barca. Barca, AC Milan and Shakhtar, who we've played a yes. lot. We've become very accustomed oh. to them in this century. And, uh, yeah, it's any Celtic players that have scored against them in any European fixture since the year 2000. Right. We're going to need to start early because... We'll get some out of the way now. Let's get some out of the way. I'm going to say Alan Thompson, Scott yeah. McDonald, Barry Robson. Yes, That's Alan same. Thompson. Be the best. Denati. There's Scott four. McDonald and Barry Robson and Mo Denati. Yeah, that's four. Yeah. Right, done. Cool. cool. I'm going to... I, you take charge of the comments, Phil. I'm going to turn them off because I, like, I take these things seriously, all right? And if anyone's not getting resp responses from me, I'm not being snide. Phil's in charge of the comments tonight. Okay, no I'm, too com I'm too competitive, Phil. Yeah, this is right, a warm-up so for the next... Uh, this is a warm-up for the next Sunday. Yeah. You know it. Monday's, mm -hmm. Monday's always looming around the corner and me against Jonathan mm -hmm. on Sutton Death in the Monday Club is mm -hmm. a serious business, mate. So I, yeah. I, I get my practice in tonight. Yeah, okay, well, we shall uh, we shall move on then, but that's a, we have to take some of the answers. Tell you what, see when we come back for the halfway point as well, we'll probably 
tick off a few more answers rather than do all good show. the rest that's of good the show. We'll do that. We'll do I that. I think that's fair. Cool. Okay, so let's get started then. Let's uh, get diving right in because we can't really put this this terrible season off any longer, mate. We need to get into it. So summer of 2004, a place that we visited already on Nostalgia because obviously we did the European Championships mm-hmm. in 2004. It was a good show, that one. I enjoyed that one. That was the uh, the Greece uh, Euros win, which was uh, quite a, a divisive Mm-hmm. Uh, title win that one because some people are all, absolutely love it and think it's amazing and there's other people with football purists are like no no no, no. more please no more <laughs> can't watch it anymore but um in a similar vein obviously you know Jose Mourinho he's got a bit of a, a reputation for the whole park the bus stuff and he's very very topical in the summer of 2004 because he's just won the Champions League with Porto and he's just moved to Chelsea to become their manager he's the hottest commodity in world football at this point isn't he a special one the special one. He sat, he sat in his press club and went, I am the special one. And, what, yeah. what what you need to remember with that, see with mm-hmm. a bit of context, he is at this point going up against an Arsenal team that is just, they've just been invincibles, am I right? Uh, yeah, the... When were the Invincibles? The Invincibles is the, the well, 03 04 season. So this is, ah, um, he, so, ah, so the reigning champions, yep. So he's walking into, he's against arguably the greatest manager of all, all time, or one of, and mm-hmm. Arsenal's Invincibles. He sits smugly smiling. Mm-hmm. I'm the special one. I'm special one. And I know I know from a Celtic perspective, people don't like Josie for the tactics deployed in Seville. And whilst, whilst I find a lot of them a wee bit distasteful, Phil, what we also learned was a steep learning curve that whilst our players were savvy, they weren't streetwise enough. Mm-hmm. Yep. This team... We're being educated by a guy who knew whatever you lack in ability, make it up in other quarters, which I think Martin O'Neill had got maybe 90% out of the Celtic team. That yep. missing 10% Josie had. And when he was going to England, he was going to obviously have a lot of money. So he knew he could be a bit blase, mm-hmm. but he also knew I'm going to give them something up here yep. they've never, ever seen before. Now that mm-hmm. transpires and that actually does become fact. Because mm. Phil, listen to a, a Frank Lampard, season pro by the time Josie yep. takes over. John Terry, club captain, season pro by the time Josie takes over. Ask mm. them, what, like watch, inter- I, don't, I don't mean you ask them. It'd be great to see you interview them, of course. But uh, <laughs> I mean, watch interviews when they talk about it, they go, he changed their yep. psyche. He turned I... them into different, different people. To have the arrogance, I think when he says that, you either sink or you swim. Mm-hmm. You put yourself in that position, you've got yeah. to back yourself when you do that. And I think for me, Jose Mourinho is a, is a far better football manager. History will be kinder to him than it will be Guardiola. Yeah, I think so. I a lot of people, it. yeah, yep. I, I think so as well. The uh, there's been a lot of like you see a lot of like changes in opinion on Mourinho over the years where people suddenly realize he was only doing what he needed to do essentially to get the success. You see a lot of guys go in where like really you know, bold strategies and stuff and come away with nothing. You know, yep. like, how many times have Man City been trying to win the Champions League under Pep? So, so yeah. but they look at Mourinho with Porto, who say 2000, he just went and won the 3 UEFA Cup against us, unfortunately. And he's backed up by then going and winning the uh, 2004 Champions League. And also, something that always seems to be like a, a regular occurrence around about this era, you always feel that one of the teams that got to the final had to go through Man United to get there. And of course, there's the famous image Jose Mourinho running down the touchline at Old Trafford when they score that late. I think it's an away goal that sends him through, if I remember right. But yeah, and that's like, this is Alex Ferguson. This is, you know, reinvigorated Alex Ferguson after deciding he was going to stay on, you know, after retiring. He was going to retire in 2002. Um, And and by the way, United decided they were going to be big again to keep Ferguson. Obviously, the conversation was, we'll give you, like, guys like Rio Ferdinand, £30 million if you stay. And he's like... Mm. Okay, I can play with that. I can play with that. Mourinho came in, and I think when you look at what he'd done, the body of work at Porto was a joke. Yep, as that um, UEFA Cup final was against the Celtic side, I think will go down as a proper, proper side. Yep. Jose, I'm sure, has done an interview where he says mm-hmm. the UEFA Cup final meant more than the Champions League one because the opposition we were in in that final made. Either made or brokers, if you like, make or break sort yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. And he went, I look at their team, mm-hmm. and that, it would have been easy for us to have lost that game. If we lose that final, we don't win the Champions League, which is true. 
Mm-hmm. That's very, very true. I definitely um, strengthened them for it. Now, do you remember the team that they beat in this final, uh, a surprise finalist as well? Was Monaco, yeah. It was uh they beat yeah. Chelsea in the semi-final. Chelsea dumped to Arsenal in the quarters. This was Mori- Ranieri's Chelsea. Morientes on loan. Morientes, yeah. yeah. My my favorite player in FIFA right now. He's absolutely banging in the goals for me in Ultimate good? Team. Yeah, he's good. Who, yeah, good. What well, who was the left winger for Monaco? Is it uh, went and played for Rangers? Is it Rotten? Jerome Rotten? <laughs> I believe it's pronounced Rotan, but uh, I think no, he was called Rotten. Rotten, Rotten <laughs> until he joined them, and we started calling him Rotten. But I, I they got him when he was on loan when he was doing about mm. 30, 31, and I thought, fuck, he was good. He I, was good in his day, but nah, I never lived up to it over there. But who does? Rotten by name, rotten by name. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, I mentioned this last week. The um. UEFA Cup final in 04, the one that you know myself, Jonathan, and Liam talked about last week, saying, because you know, we felt we were going to go all the way to that final as well after dropping at the Champions League, but no, it was won by Valencia beating Marseille 2 0 in the final. And of course, that gave us this uh, really interesting fact that in the Champions League era from 92 93 onwards, Jose Mourinho became the first manager to win UEFA Cup and Champions League back to back. The second manager to do it was Rafa Benitez, who won the UEFA Cup in 2004 wow. and the Champions League in 2005. We love a pool. Obviously, he did it with two different clubs. We knew that we won, but yeah, in the Champions League era, they are the two managers, and they're literally wow. back to back as well. That's quite crazy, that That's, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Because uh, this it's is the summer that uh, that uh, Benitez goes to uh, goes to Liverpool. He left Valencia in the summer of 04 and became Liverpool manager in 04-05. He so. always give you a Celtic link as well, Phil. Heavily oh. linked, wasn't he? <laughs> when, yeah, which yeah. time when Lennon came back for the second time he was heavy well. and by the way I think it was totally feasible Celtic mm-hmm. were ambitious he'd spent by this point remember a year in the championship in Newcastle mm-hmm. yes anyone willing to do that would have been willing to take over from Brendan Rodgers whose fucking mm-hmm. stock is high I think I think Benitez was, was a feasible option again as we always speak about with rumours you know, the Juranovic one in the summer we spoke about. Mm-hmm. Rumours come from three places. Either us courting a player, mm-hmm. the media being mischievous, or the guy who we've been linked with his agent. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and let's be honest, not even the Scottish media are going to invent we're looking at Benitez. No, no, definitely not. So I think there was more interest there. Remember, hey, all the CVs were in a drawer anyway, so it's all irrelevant. I was going to say that. All the CVs get put in a drawer. I wonder if Benitez's CV is still in there. I mean... Yeah, uh, somebody said like Park needs to go and find out, <laughs> see if it's still in Bill Lowell's old filing cabinet. Um, but yeah, the big uh winners across the continent, obviously, in England, Arsenal went undefeated, they won the Premier League in 2004, didn't lose a game over the 38. Uh, the FA Cup, Man United did win that, they beat Millwall, surprise finalists, 3 0 in Cardiff, and Middlesbrough won their only major honour, beating Bolton 2 1 in the League Cup final in Cardiff. And as we discussed last week on nostalgia, uh, this in Scotland, Celtic obviously won the league and Scottish Cup double and Hibs managed to do the most Hibs that thing ever it might even be the original Hibs that they beat Celtic in the quarter finals they beat Rangers in the semi-final and then they lost to Livingston in the final yes that is definitely Hibsing it without a shadow of a doubt and across the board in the other major leagues in Europe AC Milan were champions in Italy Valencia were champions in Spain so again Benitez a UEFA Cup and a La Liga title a second La Liga title as Valencia manager so Big business, that guy. By the way, I've just seen the quote by uh, Brian McCabe there. Yep. He's fucking... He's spot on. I've doodled another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven names. So he's not wrong. Oh, I am a bit did. stressed. I'm uh, yeah, I'm not... I, that's, I think I'm out. I think I'm out. So he takes, he takes yeah, I'm glad Brian's noticed that. Right. He, takes, he takes this shit very, very seriously. He's getting oh, practice in for Monday night. Uh, surprise winner in Germany. It's not Bayern Munich or Dortmund. It was Werder Bremen that won the title in uh, 2004. Uh, France, of course, it was Lyon. They're going through that period of dominance. Uh, Porto obviously picked up the title in Portugal. And, of course, it was Ajax again in Holland. And Paul Le Guin. Paul Le Guin. He's yes. still a manager until he becomes Rangers manager. And then Gerard he- Dullier takes over. Did he do three three Champions League semi finals in a row with Leon? I believe he may very well. Oh, he have. did. Oh, no, okay. I'm not asking. I'm telling you. Telling so, me, okay. I'm telling you, mate. So Paul <laughs> Gwen, when they got him, was a shambles. How good an appointment that is. Aye. Guess what the Orcs yep. did? They gave him six months and decided Barry Ferguson would be a better manager. Not that he got the job, <laughs> but they let him run the dressing room that much. Paul Gwen 
Real Madrid wanted. So oh my god! Fucking size VBT he got to join them. It must have been insane. <laughs> the I don't biggest... know the factor, but he must have got one hell of an EBT, mate. Because Paul Le Guin to get five six months is un like that is ridiculous for a guy who'd won three or four league guns in a row mm -hmm. and then three Champions League semi finals of the French club. That wasn't the norm. No, no, definitely not. Because I mean, the only one French club has ever won the Champions League as well. And it's Marseille back in 1993. So French clubs funnily, don't traditionally do well. I can uh, think of a club that is a wee bit correlated to that as well. Yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, the 93 Champions League. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's I was a speaking about Hibs, by the way, because mm. Frank Zosie played for both. That's what I've referred to Hibs. Oh, aye, aye, because uh, the uh. <laughs> Ah, yeah, it was a, a joke. We talked about that on Bustalgia before. It's an absolute joke that they had Frank Sosie at the time when he had him because he still very much had it at that point. Um, of, course, of course, of course, you talk to any of certain Scottish football fans about Marseille, they're usually quite angry about it. But I think the way it works when they're demanding that they should be awarded the trophy, and it's like, no, 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 the runner up would get awarded the trophy yep. if they ever stripped it of them, not the team that was in the group stages with them. But exactly. there you go. Um, but also I just mentioned a few minutes ago, the AFL mentioned the uh, European Championships in 2004 happened. And Portugal and Greece shocked the world by winning the trophy, defeating Portugal in the final. So we already covered that episode. You can check yes. that one out as well. It's a very, very good one. Yes. And uh, yeah, we will now look at Russell's favourite part of the sort of the, the first hour of the show. It's time to look at transfer markets, ridiculous transfer fees. I don't know I why they do you it. You should just tell me them. You should just tell me them and I'll be able to ring them off fucking more accurately than transfer markets. Well, number Shout 10. Ins. Number 10 on the list is an absolute shambles. I remember this move happening, but he is the 10th most expensive transfer in World of Football this summer. Jonathan Woodgate going from Newcastle to Real Madrid. Am mm -hmm. I right in saying that he got sent off and scored an own goal in his debut for Real Madrid? He did. He did. <laughs> Sixteen point four million, well spent. And during his injury well, spell, decided to grow his hair, wear one of those really thin like headbands, yeah. and come back. And he's like, "Yeah, we still know it's you, Woodgate. We still <laughs> like." Think he tried to come back from his injury, like he was like Spanish. They'll not know. They'll not remember me. <laughs> think he's Alessandro Nesta, some try to be Italian, Jonathan Woodgate or something like that. You know, mm. try to be. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, he was. According to this, sixteen point four million. It's obviously the 2022 inflation on it. Again, I don't know why they do this, but he was the 10th most expensive transfer. The night up, similar to last week, Chelsea are all over this list because they are just going crazy. And plus, Jose Mourinho back is bringing him, in a lot. You do, back. you do back him. You do. He's a European, as, as he called it, I'm European champion. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Who says that? <laughs> I'm European champion. No, no, I left the European champions to come here. I I'm am European, European champion. champion. <laughs> I'm the special <laughs> one. If I mean, I, if, come on. I think if any of us had a manager coming in and saying that, I think we'd be for it. I think we don't get me wrong. We'd be going, you fucking better live up to it. But I think we would. I think how what a way to get that whole support galvanized, everyone mm -hmm. on side. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm European champion. I've got nothing to prove. Huh? <laughs> I'm like, it. it's like you're going against Wenger, Invincible. Mm -hmm. You're going yep. against Ferguson, one of the best of all time, if not the great. Mm -hmm. They'll probably call him the greatest of all time. They obviously mm -hmm. don't know who Jock Steen is down there. You know what I mean? Um, no. <laughs> and but J Josie's like, I have nothing to prove. I'm European champion. I am the special huh? one. Uh, mm -hmm. What do the board do? They fucking back him, Phil. They back him. They do indeed. Yes, because. Uh... Paulo Ferreira was in that that window, the right back from a portal, 18 million. Jibro yeah. Cissi went from Oxford, Oxford to Liverpool for 18 million. Again, I'll let the, these prices I doubt are true. Now, this is one that some people can forget. Deco didn't go straight to Chelsea. He had a wee stop at Barcelona along the way. And as I seem to say, every week we do this, but he's about to play a part in our upcoming season. There's always Funny one that. in the top 10. Aye, oh, it's yeah. almost like we're, you know, we're, we're, we're dining with the big teams at the big table. We come up against big players. But yeah, Deco moves from Porto to Barcelona for 18.9 million. Walter Samuel went from Roma to Real Madrid, 22.5. Samuel Eto, Mallorca to Barcelona, 24.3. Emerson, no, no, not the Middlesbrough one that eventually played for Rangers, a different one, went from Roma to Juventus, 25.2 million. Ricardo Carvalho, Porto to Chelsea, 27 million. Second most expensive transfer, Wayne Rooney. 
Everton Man United 33.3 million and number one Didier Drogba Marseille to Chelsea 34.6 million and I've mentioned this a few times on the show we talk about the cost of the number nine at Chelsea it's safe to say that Didier Drogba was the absolute standout hit for Chelsea over the the money years because every other striker they seem to sign there's some sort of costs on them some sort of hoodoo but Drogba he is a uh, Torres, I don't, yeah. I don't. Drogba's but, a different breed, mate. He's unbelievable. Drogba, a player recommended to Celtic at one point. That's right. I that was mentioned on a nostalgia show a few weeks ago, wasn't it? Where it's mm-hmm. like, you know, imagine if we'd replaced Henry Glasson with the dear Drogba. Imagine it. Was this? Did we talked about this at the uh, the Euro four one? We brought up Dimitar Berbatov's name. This would have been around about the time I'd imagine Berbatov, Berbatov would have been linked to us as well. Berbatov was linked with us under Martin O'Neill. It would have been. 2003, 2004, aye, mm-hmm. 100%. It was heavily liked. We need to remember as well, see this summer is the king has gone long with the king, right? Mm-hmm. And it's, I would never say the king is dead because I fucking love Henry too no, much, right? Not the king all, is I gone, gone but yeah. long live the king. Who's the new king going to be? This is where the trial stuff started to sell to. Mm-hmm. You could pinpoint now, Phil, see when you look back, this is when the Lowell effect really became sharp in focus. We hadn't seen it because Martin O'Neill's team were all conquering the year before. That you did so brilliantly last week. Mm-hmm. You know, the green and white wash. It masked over the fact, really, we're not strengthening the squad anymore. We're the first team anymore. That's two yeah. summers in a row. Aye. We don't actually strengthen the first team anymore. No. We asked Rivaldo for a trial. And mm-hmm. by the way, that rumour got allowed to be pinned on Martin. Which I think's fucking out of order. Yep. You genuinely think Martin O'Neill asked, Oh, I need to see Rivaldo on trial. <laughs> no, that's what's been pitched to Martin uh, That's yep. what's been pitched. We want you to watch him on trial. And that was the yeah. only option he had because we were worried he'll be here for the wrong. And if you actually look at what Rivaldo went on to do mm-hmm. from the summer of 2004, was he spent four years, I think it was, at Olympiacos and became mm-hmm. a god in the Greek yep. League. The yep. same way. He would have became a god at Celtic. Absolutely astounding. The very thought of it happening would have just been... It was there. Blew my mind. It was right there. there. Right there. It was a free transfer. If he could have went to Olympiacos at that time, I think Celtic was a more attractive option. Mm-hmm. Bar the weather. Yeah. And the, mm-hmm. the, 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 the story is, it was a trial that he was offered. Yeah. And that got pinned on, oh, Dinosaur O'Neill. Mm-hmm. If you think Martin O'Neill, as a football manager, is getting offered diddies, He's like, well, it's an upgrade for David Fernandez. Sign him. You know, you genuinely think Martin O'Neill wanted to trial Rivaldo. No, this is, I think, something that became the norm for another 15 years, 16 years. I really do believe that. Yep. And uh, a little spoiler as well as to, you know, this season coming up. It's like, this is is the wee things because you can make a few little mistakes along the way. But see, when you make lots of big mistakes, there's very little recovery and this is one of the big mistakes the amount of uh I, Rivaldo doesn't do the auditions just like Zlatan doesn't do them uh but yeah it's um this is one of the clangers and it's not even just this season as Russell said there you look back at the previous two seasons the uh spend has got less and less we're starting the to downsizing is in front of you. Yeah, it's like we've given you your toys Mm-hmm. Your toys are about to you know go out of date expire whatever you want to call them yeah you know you, you know but tough Tough. Huh? Now, now we're going to Aldi's. Like, yep. Fuck off. Like, it's just wrong. Like, right. see, when you get a successful manager, you fuck it. And, and I'm going to just, just to transfer this into modern times, I mm-hmm. think Ange ramped up the pressure at the AGM today. I've seen a few of the quotes. Yes. We need to be agile in the transfer market. Very mm. clever word. Yeah. I Very like the whole we want to be a Champions League team. We need to basically but, behave like a Champions look League at, team. Look yep. at the other teams. Yeah. Players last two years, but you sell them on for huge profit. But you then need to be spending a far bigger chunk of that profit, not just mm-hmm. continuing in the same supermarket. Upgrade to Marks and Spencers, then sell them to fucking Harrods. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like this is it. Like, and I think Ange is on the ball that way. And by the way, can I just say, he's not saying anything that Martin O'Neill wouldn't have been saying. But mm-hmm. Martin O'Neill was basically, well, you were spoiled at the start, and I think Martin O'Neill's loyalty to Celtic. Because he was Celtic through and through, was ultimately what kept him in that job longer 
than what it would keep any other manager of his yeah. ability. Aye, the, the, the backing that you're getting of season upon season, any other manager would have, uh, I mean, what's, what's what that, we, obviously... What's that, that give? Fuck off. Fuck off. I mean, who's obviously another manager from modern times that we can use as an example? Brendan Rodgers, perhaps? It's like a manager of that calibre. If you're no backing him, he's going to get frustrated. Right. And when another team comes along, he is going to go. So it's like, yeah, it was... Yeah, this season, I say, when we get to the transfers, it's... Uh, <sighs> It's, it's, it's brutal, brutal stuff. But before we get to that, obviously, we will do a wee quick look at what was going on, what the pop culture and any notable news headlines from that summer. So the season kicked off on the 8th of August 2004. Celtic defeated Motherwell 2 0 at Celtic Park and number yep. one on that date in the singles chart. Uh, busted one number one, I believe, our very own Liam Collow, not Liam Greenlaw, Liam Collow. Didn't he reveal to us one time he's got like the busted so on badge or his like a uh, jacket that he wears to concerts? I'm like, a tattoo. A tattoo. <laughs> ah, aye, aye. <laughs> aye, busted. Yeah, the theme tune from the Thunderbirds movie was number one in the chart. It actually knocked Dry Your Eyes by the streets off the top spot. The Red Hot Chili Peppers were number one now. Year 3000. <laughs> well, this is a time traveling show, so that's quite appropriate. Year well, 3000, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, number one in the album Red Hot Chili Peppers were number one it was actually a live album that was number one it was from a concert they did at Hyde Park and the number one film at the box office on the day the season kicked off was I, Robot, starring Will Smith now, usually we do obviously the festival lineups and here's an interesting one for you I was at Tea in the Park in 2004 I have some experience of this and uh, before we came on the air take it away Phil before we came on the air, that was my first festival I went to, and to this day, it's still my last festival I ever went to, because uh, all I'll just say is, think of like, the worst place you've ever, ever been, and I tell you right now, the a toilet. a portaloo tea in the park is on that level, because uh, I'm sorry to be so brash, and sorry if you're eating or anything, but how people can go into a portaloo and completely miss the pan... <laughs> Uh, it's just beyond me. Like, I was like, and once you've stood in the queue for ages, and once you're actually in, it's like, well, I need to go to the toilet, but look at what's in front of me right now. It's like, what am I meant to do? I can't go back out because I've just stood in the queue for ages. And it's uh, so after I experienced the toilets at Tea in the Park, I said, never again. Mm -hmm. I will never, ever do another festival. And to this day, I still haven't. I just watched them on TV. Yeah, <laughs> play, just, you just didn't play the game right, mate. I didn't play so, the game, mate. I didn't. I was a rookie error. Game. My first one, I didn't do it right, mate. So, like, Tea in the Park for me, right, was about how do you get in whatever it is you want to bring in? Roll on deodorant. Mm. Run clips, pop in whatever you want. Right? No one's going to search that. That's clever. Mm -hmm. That's clever for a 17-year-old. <laughs> and then the portal is, I had heard, were disgusting, right? And I was like, I'm not going to yep. fucking... I'm not, go I'm not going to that. I like, I, that gives me the heebie-jeebies, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. So without Google, I just knew Imodium sort of solidifies your stomach if you like if you've got the runs shall we say so if you don't have the runs it just turns into a rock your stomach right <laughs> so two disposable emodiums every day i camped i think nine years i'm sure it was nine times i've camped at in the park with the same pal by the way every time mm -hmm. not that they'll be watching esports the other team but he'll tell you i've never been a port loo in my life at in the park never once oh, never me. once mate <laughs> I wish I had the savvy. Imodium, I know ahead of my ahead of my time, mate. But Imodium solved that problem big style. Don't get me wrong, wasn't the most pleasant Monday Tuesday ever, but it was never going to be pleasant anyway. You're going to be hung over it, fuck anyway. So yeah. you may as well do it constipated. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was. Uh, it's true. I, I, oh, I, mate, honestly, but the the memories, those those memories, putting them aside. You know, Tea in the Park 2004, in terms of like the music, they're the one that always stood out to me because uh, Kasabian bust on the scene this year. Now, again, when we yeah. did the Euro 04 one, we were very positive about the music scene at that point. This is around about the time when all sorts of, of British indie rock bands are just blown up. Now, my mate, who I went with, one of my pals that I went with, he uh, was a, he, a, a regular viewer of like MTV2 at Stupid O'Clock in the Morning where they would play like new and obscure music and uh, mm. Kasabian Club Foot had only just bust on the scene then and he was like, because he was the first band on the NME stage that day. Oh, and he's so like, good. when are you going to see this band? Like, he was like, come on, guys, when are you going to see them? And they heard the Kasabian. And honestly, after just watching that set, 
I've never ever counted down to the release of an album in my life, but genuinely, I came away from that festival going, I need Kasabian's album, and it wasn't out until October 2004. I was That's like, right. they are fucking class, man. Absolutely he was class. Totally different as well. Yeah. Tom, Tom, at that point, he was like a psychopath, which it turns mm. out he, he might actually have been. But his on stage presence was, he looked mad. The whole band sounded mad, but it was like, it was raw. It was like it was a you know not Gordon mm. Ramsay. Oh, it's raw. Like they were <laughs> genuinely, they were like, oof, that's that's different, very different. They were almost dancing at times. Yeah, nice. but rock and roll. Aye, that Kasabian debut is a classic. Aye. And 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 what they did was, whatever. Once the album came out, you went fuck. That's good, but then live is now. Yeah. Their and, live reputation exploded, mate. Aye. And funny enough, this coming season we're going to talk about, I went to see them at the Barrowlands the night we played AC Milan in the Champions League and drew 0-0 on the last night. I was at the Barrowlands that night, Sabian again, one of the best concerts I've been to. Like, they were so wow. good. But I think as well, like, Tom was an awesome front man. Obviously, what's happened to him has happened. But Serge, the guitarist, just one of the coolest guys, like... So this guy, man, just epitomizes cool. I was like, this guy's fucking awesome. So I guess band just blew my mind right away. I was like, oh, fucking awesome. It was a great, great band. So right away, I had to get the album. As soon as it came out, I was like, I'm right into the shop to get that as soon as it I launched. I remember it, uh, the black cover. Uh, yes. With this like, a white guy with like, it looked like a bit like Shinobi. Remember yeah, the Sega? yeah. Do you remember the, the, Se- the Sega game? Mm-hmm. Shinobi had like yep. the sort of balaclava thing. Ah, you know what? Right. They were edgy. It seemed right. edgy. So uh, that was definitely a standout memory of that one. But the other big acts of this year that the darkness yep. headlined it, filling in for David Bowie, who was meant to play one of the nights. So it was the Strokes with the other headline headline act. Uh, we had also Muse, Massive Attack. They headlined the enemy stage, Ocean Color Scene, Snow Patrol. Yeah. They headlined King Tuts. And I say other big acts that appeared at the tea were Red Hot Chili Peppers, Kings of Leon, Franz Ferdinand, Scissor Sisters, Kasabian, Faithless, The Libertines, Razor Light, Zootons, The Killers, NERD, Ash, Amy Winehouse, and the Charlatans all appeared at Tea in the Park that weekend. Quite a lineup, Russell. Phil, the term coined by Mr. The Judge Kearney, mm-hmm. raffle winner, raffle ticket winner, whatever you want. Ah, to yes, the darkness for the raffle winner. Yeah. That is the darkness group, like mm-hmm. taking headline act because David Bowie had a lollipop. An eye injury? Hit him in the eye. Aye, uh, again, aye. I believe, I think it was the only European leg of his tour that someone for the crowd's throwing an actual fucking chipper chops at him. Do you know what I mean? Right in the eye. He's like, I've already got eye issues. Clearly, I've got a dilated pupil as it is. Because yeah. you know, do you know David Bowie doesn't have different colored eyes? You know, I think I've said this aye. before to you. Like, I've, I've colors. seen the pictures of him, but that isn't like. People think uh, his eyes are different colors. They're not. Same right. colored eyes. But one pupil's a lot bigger than the other. Oh, right, right. So that's you, what gives us the impression. Ah, he has different right. coloured eyes. He doesn't. Ah. But for that to be the ironic injury that he gets, someone's mm. throwing a fucking lollipop stick. I'm sure I'm right. If I'm not, I will stand corrected in the comments, but I'm positive <laughs> he had to pull out the tea in the park because of an ah. eye injury, and it was because of like a chupa chops, you know what I mean? Or chopper ah. chops, whatever you call See, it. See, all I'm thinking in my head right now, I think it's one of the, I think it's the second Austin Powers film. There's a bit where somebody throws a shoe and he goes, who throws a shoe, honestly? And I'm just thinking, who throws a lollipop, honestly? I know. Like, I who does that? No one should be throwing anything at David Bowie. That's the, yeah. That is the truth. Yeah, you know, exactly. Too cool for school. What the hell's that all about? But yeah, Tea in the Park, good one that year. And I say on the Euro 04 uh, episode in the first hour, we do a lot of more talking about the, the music of that era because the darkness do feature big because they were around for a cup of coffee at this time. This was their big moment, their big album, and uh, they were pretty much gone by the time we rolled into 2005. They were, they were nowhere to be seen. So, the darkness, we do go into depth on that one. They're over at Glastonbury, uh, Oasis, Paul McCartney, and Muse were the headline acts on the three nights. Good lineup there. Uh, horrible a big... review, horrible review. Horrible. I don't know if you remember. Hmm. Oh, so we stunt gig maybe in 18 months and Liam comes out with the white parka with the sort of almost feathers yeah okay I can see that and in my head John Lennon can... sunglasses and a beard yes I can see that in my and head right now fir- it was the first time you saw him going <laughs> like as opposed to like doing his normal vocal okay and I it, it, yeah it went down like a lead balloon oh, wow. but I went down like a lead balloon but he apparently was fucked off with the sound and then 
I think, I it was weird, but his voice mm. kind of got shite for the rest of his time at Oasis. Now it's back, which is mental. Yeah. I don't know how he's, I don't know how he's brought it back. It's bizarre. But I there was what well, there's a lot of the footage. I remember getting it. This showed you. I had the internet then, right? But like I had the internet, <laughs> and I bought the live DVD on eBay for about fucking I don't know, eight ninety nine. Something like my Summerfield wages, mate. Summerfield, remember Summerfield? Ah, that's that's Summerfield, where I worked. Yeah, yeah. This is where I worked in 2004. I started in April 2004. Mm. Um, I'm still best pals. We're not best pals, but we're brilliant pals. Still with the guy who hired me. And he says, you never deserve to be hired. <laughs> okay. Showing a blazer and a Doctor Who scarf. He goes, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> that was me at 16. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. me and him still, he watches the bus full. He ain't sure right. he's in that. I generally watches the bus. Oh, and, next uh, one. Ah, uh, he's called Shawnee. But like, he, so anyway, anyway, all that by the by. Huh? In two thousand and four, going on eBay was a new thing. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was all over. So my Summerfield wages, thank you, Shawnee. Um, mm. I was spending on Oasis bootleg DVDs of the live performance. So someone's uh, huh? even back then. Was able to clip the BBC basically footage of right. the full gig okay. in perfect, not HD then, but whatever you would call it, and uh, you could pop it in your PS2 and watch it, mate. And that okay. is, and okay. but that Oasis gig went down like a lead balloon in the enemy and Q magazine and all that Aye. stuff. But, but ah. I thought it looked pretty cool. I always does, always does, and also just a quick wee segue as well, I should have realised, because obviously we've got uh, Resident Rangers fans in the chat tonight, old Bob McBob, I did mention toilets earlier on, so naturally, the comments have been, well, been that road again, so yeah, I should have I yeah, looked I, into that one. Bob, Bob's, <laughs> by the way, Bob's alright with the helicopter banter, in my opinion, I think it's, <laughs> if it was the other way round. Yeah, I know, but we'll get to it later up, on. He does put up with pelters, by the way, for everyone. Like, oh, yeah. and he's always all right with us. I mean, I know he's been a prick once to you, Phil, but he got around for that. Yeah. He's, and and I think, I think since then, it, Bob's all right. He, I can handle well, if, if he's expecting, like, a two-hour-long dissection of uh, that final <laughs> game of the park, he's, he's, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's in for a surprise. That ain't <laughs> happening. Uh, but uh, I'll quickly just finish off with the, the music stuff. So I say Paul McCartney, Muse, Oasis with the headline acts at Glasgow, Kings of Leon, Morrissey, Black Eyed Peas, Chemical Brothers, Franz Ferdinand, Kasabian, Bell and Sebastian, Snow Patrol, Basement Jacks, Razor Light, Zootons and Scissor Sisters. Just incredible lineups at this point in time. But yep. uh, shortly after this, music just goes and plunges. Another wee story that I did think was quite interesting, kind of football related, which just again shows that sometimes positive stories can come from adversity in sport is. Uh, this is the summer when Athens, Greece held the Olympics. Now, during the football tournament, Iraq, with the backdrop of the war and terror going on in their country, got all the way to the bronze medal match. They beat Portugal along the way, which had Cristiano Ronaldo, Rui Costa and Jose Bosingla, to name just a few in the squad. I, Iraq, they finished fourth in the end and lost to Italy in the bronze medal match. But when I looked at the Olympic football tournament, I can remember seeing bits of this during that summer, and I was like, Iraq? Because sometimes in the Olympic football team, some of the, the teams that are in it, like you never see them in World Cups or anything. And it's like, oh, and given what was going on in Iraq at that point. But yeah, they ended up uh, going pretty far. So that obviously gave the people of that country, you know, something to get behind and say sport can do that and really galvanize a nation. Uh, but we've seen things with the Ukraine in recent months as well, you know. It seems like the whole world was getting behind them as well at times and telling Scotland, you're the bad guys if you dare beat them. How dare you even think about it? Even Scottish pundits were telling us, you better not win this game. Mm. <sighs> mental, mental stuff. But let's go on now to the pre-season roundup and talk yes. about what Celtic did to prepare for this season. Or didn't oh, do. Or didn't do, yes. Or they didn't do. Uh, probably more appropriate because, yeah... I say Russell's already mentioned it. Henry Larson, he's gone. He's left. He gave us a year's notice. He worked his notice for a full 12 months. That's a hell of a notice period. You know, and uh, we've had a long time to get a short list together. All fail these different to prepare targets. or prepare to fail. Prepare to fail. Yeah. It's and, a fucking you know, disgrace, this. You know that. Mm -hmm. I actually got wound up. I read your full email, Phil, uh, mm -hmm. last night when you sent it. I then started watching the season unfold. There was a a link you sent, a guy we need, I probably should give kudos to, there's a YouTube channel called mm -hmm. Irvin Boy, B-H-O-I, yep. yep. and he's basically collated all the seasons, all the Scott Sport highlights, or whether it be 
a full match highlights mm. that you can get. He's put them all together in chronological order. And it's quite mm. fun for a nostalgia trip, usually. Yep. Yeah. Not on this occasion. I think you knew I think when I look back at it, you get to match day one and you start looking at that team and you go, it's aging. Yeah. In front of your eyes. Mm. Not because all the players are past it by any stretch, but when you put them all accumula accumulatively together. Yep. Easy mm -hmm. for me to say. Mm -hmm. That is a squad that is predominantly over 30 years old. Yes, a it first is. Team yep. in fact, I should say, over 30 years old. I don't think Martin deserved that. You're right. Yep. You're totally right. It's, it's, you could see it as the season was going on. You really could. Now, you could tell something just wasn't right. The, the magic was just gone. And it wasn't just doing it. Oh, Henry Glasson's no there. That team were more than capable. But this felt like something was just off a bit of, and uh yeah. i think it's interesting when you look at the some of the guys that's been brought in see see the ones that cost money sutton mm. lennon we mm. knew what we were getting they were three four-year deals four-year deals that you went it's going to take them into their 30s and we were cool with that because of their ability mm -hmm. right i i think when it comes down to like vargas of the world, no, yeah. not in a bad way to him. But once he's part of the same age equation, you go, well, he was he was brought in during the mm -hmm. revolution, the Martin O'Neill era. Like he's been brought in during that period. Was he really an ambitious signer? Or was he a free transfer that O'Neill went? Fuck's sake! When you're given mm. no pennies, that'll have to do. But he's yeah. aging alongside the ones that were brought in during their mm. peak. Yep. Right. Janino is the marquee signing. Phil, for example, he's mm. thirty-one at this time. Again, was he brought in because he was on a freebie? I, I mean, it could it could very well be. You know, look at the way they're downsizing. Um, I mean, I remember we signed Junior at the time, and it was like this, this isn't actually what we need because he was a midfielder. A lot of people think he was a striker or a forward, and it's like no, 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 he's a midfielder. That was the one place that we really, really needed after Henrik Larson leaving was a forward, and all we brought in in terms of that department was after maybe. Looking at all different targets, you see names like Drogba and Berbatov were all around about that time as well, like the Celtic. We end up landing on Senegalese striker Henri Kamara, mm -hmm. who we brought in on loan from a club that were in the sing the second tier of English football. Wolves had just been relegated. Now, at this time, nowadays, a loan to Celtic is common practice. I'm used to it now. But back then, I felt like loans were quite small time for us, and we'd done a few at this point. You know, Michael Gray came in on loan the season before. He was a championship player as well. And then this season, we bring in a lone player from the championship from Wolves, who didn't really set the world alight in the Premier League years that he played at Wolverhampton Wanderers. And it was like, you just knew this this, this is not absurd. It felt like we'd rushed around, looked for a few different targets, they didn't come to fruition. He'll just need to do. It's like we said that Stanislav Varga there, but it's like, he'll just need to do. This is fucking where it becomes, why, why ever even to today, should we never be allowed or afforded to have the opinion, Phil, of keep your eye on the board. Mm -hmm. Yes. Keep your eye on this lot. It's so prevalent when you look. We've mm -hmm. been in positions of crazy strength before. Yep. And no stronger than what we were under O'Neill, by the way, or mm -hmm. as a European front yep. and a domestic front. Right now, we're extremely strong as a domestic front. Don't turn your eye on them then. You know, don't, don't turn your back mm. on them then until we become a European front again. That would be my advice. Um, mm. Whether that's difficult or not for people to get their heads around Celtic becoming, I think we've got the absolute foundations and so does Ange that we can. So does O'Neill. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, Phil, when you look at the recruitment there. Henri Kamara, if he was the answer, un unbelievable for anyone to believe... Yep. that the right question was being asked when Henrik handed, as you say, effectively his notice in <laughs> yeah. 12 months prior. Yep. I know. What was Wait, the question if that was the answer? Want, really? Like, what more do you want from Henrik? Like, mm -hmm. this guy's not only giving you the most unbelievable seven years, but after mm. year six, he actually gives you a year's notice. I'm away. I'm that mm. aware. You know, not in a, a, a you know, overlay boasting mm. way. But I'm that aware I'm that good. I'm actually going to give you 12 months to fucking get a decent replacement in. 
Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, he went out with a bang. We talked about it last week. He finished on a league and cup double and scored 41 goals in his final season. It's not like he even phoned it in at the end, you know. People working the unnoticed technically, you know, they're just kind of how, winding down. He went out with an absolute bang. How is it a loan signing to replace that for, for Wolves? It, like, again, it who's just taking the piss out of who here, by the way? Aye. You know, who's I, taking the piss out of who? See, again, I just feel like it reeks off. They've looked at a few targets. It's not went anywhere and at the last minute because they sign them quite late in the window, just before the season kicks off, if I remember right. It's like the first league games, like just around the corner, and then he comes in. So it did feel like at the time that we'd scrambled around, a few targets never came in. It was like, but he's available, right? We'll just we'll just take him. And it's like the, the pedigree of that guy, it just wasn't up to scratch. And as we've already mentioned as well, I- this is the same summer that we obviously offered the cheek of it, Rivaldo, a trail. So you are talking earlier on about, I mean, the ideas before this, but here again are the numbers. This is what Rivaldo had achieved in his career. He'd won the World oh. Cup in 2002, two La Liga titles of Barcelona and a Copa del Rey and a UEFA Super Cup. He was a Champions League winner with AC Milan mm-hmm. in 2003, won the Copa Italia and a UEFA Super Cup with them. His agent, of course, rightfully described the trial offer mm-hmm. as an insult. It really was... I remember the back page of the Sunday Mail. I remember like my dad shouted me from yeah. downstairs. It comes through the letterbox, and he was like, "Shout me out!" And I went and peeked my head down the stairs. And, your and he dad just held up, legend, by the way. and it simply said, "Rivaldo signs for Celtic." That was the headline. Because again, you're talking about it was put on Martin, and I think Martin was just it had to say, "Yeah, we're in talks or something." And it, the back page was running with it in the Sunday Mail. Rivaldo signs for Celtic, and it was like. My mind was absolutely blown because you know, Rivaldo, who was playing for Barcelona just a few years ago in AC Milan, is like, we're going to get him for nothing. It's like the idea of it. And then you hear it a couple of days what's, later, you hear the story, actually, we've offered him a trial and he's rejected us. And it's like, oh my What's God. wrong with the football club, Phil, at times being a bit self-indulgent? Mm. What's wrong with us having a sign in like Rivaldo that makes us all dream? Why does it have to be a reactive one like Robbie Keane was a yeah. dream signing? Yeah. Signed or really to try and just, just please everyone be quiet. We know we're not doing yeah. well. Robbie Keane wasn't sign, signed to, to steal the league back. Robbie Keane was signed, for example, to just try and shut people up. Mm. Right? Because we uh, what, what would have been wrong with us just for once going the, we, you know, last one was the dream. But here's some imagination, mm-hmm. right? And I think, yep. what a way, what a hangover cure. A hangover cure doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. I'm sure some people wish it does on a Monday. But a hangover cure doesn't always exist. And mm-hmm. Rivaldo would have been the closest thing to yeah. the Larson hangover cure. I uh, mean, uh, I think Rivaldo signs the world, our world, the Celtic mm-hmm. world, stops. Yep. And by the way, I think if people want recognition from English media, we've all been poo pooed. I think Sky Sports, for example, that day, mm-hmm. that Sky Sports News, that ticker bar stops. It just it yep. stops tickering. It mm-hmm. just stops with Rivaldo signs for Celtic. Yep. Shut sails. Mate, Everyone ridiculous. back on board. Martin O'Neill, maybe, mm-hmm. starting to go, yep. okay, you're yep. piquing my interest here. A trial's an insult. What's the bigger insult? The fact we took a year to come up with Henri Camara to replace the King of Kings or the fact we offered Rivaldo a trial? I think they're both up there as two insults. Mm. It's a double whammy. And by the way, a complete sign of things to come for these bastards. I I mean, I I know I certainly know saying bastards a wee bit hard. Now, fuck them. (laughs) We were then left, Phil, up the swanee. And Dyson with being a Champions League force, even not even just being a just being a Champions League club for the next fifteen mm-hmm. years. See if you actually did have the mystic mystic made crystal ball. Mm-hmm. Deep down, you could have looked down and went, "Wow, I see what we will become in Europe for the next fifteen years." Yep. Yeah, could you and imagine? What Celtic have become was Why? a once every now and then. Yeah, but not under Strachan, just a wee bit further down the line. Strachan unbelievably mm. due to his brilliant management in Europe mm. got us still achieving a crazy level Europe mm. but what then would transpire really the writing was on the fucking wall Phil yes. that I find mm-hmm. disgusting considering what was what had been built what had been built from a club 
hadn't all been for Hartson's goal against Celta Vigo, mm -hmm. that hadn't been, if my memory serves me right, a club in Europe beyond uh, a club beyond in Europe beyond Christmas. Hmm. How many years? <laughs> yeah, twenty years since the last time we've been in Europe beyond Christmas. Had it not been for Hartson's hmm. goal against Celtic, yeah, it was uh, nineteen eighty. Was the last time before that against Real Madrid? That's quite topical right now. But yeah, we played Real Madrid in nineteen eighty, and then the next time was two thousand and two through the two thousand three season. So. What are we doing here? Like, <laughs> is there an invisible Celtic glass ceiling, Phil? Is it the more that we think that. about it, the more we go, ah, will they get, we mm. let you get to there, then mm. we crush your dreams. So it feels, I'm not being, I'm not yeah. being, you know, well, maybe I'm being a bit dramatic, but that is actually the truth. I, because the, um... the reality at this time was, we had a fucking brilliant team. We did. We did, man. Um, but the uh, fear not, Russell, because uh, somebody did sign Rivaldo for Celtic. I signed him on a free transfer of football <laughs> manager, 2004 2005. Do you want to know what happened? Now everyone's always got good yeah. football manager stories. I signed him, and it was a case of because he was a free agent, there was something where you had to get him a work permit. Even though he had lots of caps, it was like you had to get a work permit, and that means he's got to play X amount of games. He broke his leg in the first game I played against Hearts and was out for X amount of months, and his work permit basically expires, and I couldn't then use him after that. I was like, great, I've basically signed a paperweight, essentially, so I couldn't actually use him for the duration of his contract because he got injured in his very first game. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> so I can remember signing him because he, when you bought Football Manager for that season, he was a free agent at the start because that's what he started in real life. But yeah, I was like, I'll sign Rivaldo instead. I'll bring him to Celtic. And yeah, he got injured against Hearts in my first game of the season and uh, a broken leg. And yeah, his work permit then expires and you can't use him when he does come back to fitness. I was like, oh, great. So you've got to try and loan him out to a European club. I was like, how? Oh, so yeah, it was that was a horrible memory when I think about the Rivaldo to uh, Celtic. And then also when you're saying about like English media would have paid attention, I think world football media would have paid attention to that. Again, this is, I know we did sign a Brazilian World Cup winner that season, but technically he was a substitute for Brazil at that World Cup. This is Rivaldo, who was a Ballon d'Or winner, if I remember correctly. Ballon d'Or with Barcelona. You know, won multiple titles. Two of the biggest teams in the world, AC Milan and Barcelona, won the Champions League World Cup. Honestly, why does the... everything, everything we do have to be, well, you know, we can't. Do you know what it's like? It's like a conservative approach. And you know I'm not political, yeah. Phil. Yeah, yeah. But this is sort of that vibe, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Why can't we dream? Especially when when we did have the real myth, which was Henrik. I mean, that is, and I don't mean a myth of what he did, but that was something even now you still try to process. Oh. How the fuck did we have him at his peak? How the fuck did he turn down Man United and Juventus to stay with us? Mm. How did that happen? I think it would have been... I think that I think the fan base we've got are very romantic. I think the fan base believe in dreams. I think Celtic have had a lot of dreams, and I think mm -hmm. they've always been done while we've been ambitious. I think a thirty-two-year-old Rivaldo, mm -hmm. who has won those accolades, you say he mm -hmm. then goes on Phil to Olympiacos and look yeah. what he does there for the next four years. Club oh, yeah. captain by the end, took it on board. He took it seriously, Olympiacos, the same way he would have took on the Celtic Challenge. He would have. Oh, just the idea of it. Imagine him with the number seven shot, mate. What a fucking What's lovely... What's wrong with us getting oh. these self-indulgent moments? I don't understand. Like, this is meant to be fun, supporting mm. your team. No, oh, yep. strict, strict, strict. I get it oh. to an extent, but there's got to be moments where the King of Kings leaves. Mm -hmm. We then still get, I'll go back to my favourite term, our boys tickled. <laughs> boys tickled, uh, like, yeah. Uh, what's wrong with this though? Like, it's, it's mental. It's like, why just not push the boat out? I say, look at what happened. And that could have been the difference between what happened at the end of the season. Could have been the difference of more, of that quality. Could have been, yep. And more, it's called also, yeah. Phil, mm. captivating your audience. Yeah. Captivating your audience. As I've always I was saying mm. this in the summer, we were talking about, you know, See if you you you've got a you know you know you you buy a ticket for the cinema right, mm -hmm. and you go fucking hell look at the budget of whatever film it may have been, fucking hell the cast 
they cost yeah. a fortune, right? Yeah. Did you get your money's worth? Ah, you walk out. Leonardo DiCaprio film, for example. Yeah, yeah. Nine times out of ten, you walk out and you got your money's worth. Yeah, indeed. You pay your money. The fans will pay their money. Exactly. The cast will. has cost yeah. a fortune. And we weren't asking for the full living of that mm. cast to cost a fortune. What we were asking for was an exception to the rule. And I think it was an exceptional circumstances when the King of Kings left. There was a void filled. Mm. Oh, huge. How huge does it void. get filled? Now, by the way, mm. by the way, do I think Rivaldo gets to Henrik levels? Who knows? Mm. I doubt it. But boy, does he go a long way. Even his shut moment. Oh, God. What a message it is, by the way. See if, if, see if you want to go back to, oh, we can't compete in Europe. You know, we were still better than Rangers then. Well, fuck that. That's that job done anyway. You know, the second he signs, fucking over to the rivals. If that's all you want to live in that wee world, that goldfish bowl, then job done. With one signing, one exception at the rule. And by the way, the wage packet, you were already paying for the King of Kings. That's true. Yeah, that's something that we brought up not too long ago. Where you know, we Would Rivaldo pressing. really have been joining us on 70 grand a week? Jinky was at Olympiacos in 2004 at 32 and 70, 80 grand a week. Stop being mm. silly. Oh, Stop not. being silly. It's so frustrating, sorry. that one. I think as, it was, uh, very we much so. We yeah, the um, but the other transfers, I'll say that was along with Janino coming in, that was the only summer activity. The January activity, we brought in Stefan Oncho and a free and Craig Bellamy in the January. But we'll get to Craig Bellamy later on. We've got a very special segment devoted to him because a lot of questions were like, what if? What if? Because yeah, he was he was a decent acquisition. The players leaving, obviously, we've mentioned Henrik Larson. He went to Barcelona. Lee Miller went to Man United. Johan Mialbi went to Levante. Jamie Smith went to Ado Den Haag. He played play in Holland. But all those players leaving... He went to where could... Shorty sure Phil? Could I just come in there? Yes. Because actually... Uh -huh. My name uh, suddenly is Van der Boise because I know <laughs> Scott Howe will be loving this because when we talk <laughs> about the players going to the era the beach, uh, Holland, Holland <laughs> as you call us, but we're yep. actually the Netherlands, mm -hmm. Jamie Smith. Jamie the, Van Smith now, you know Jamie Van yeah, Smith. Who the, who the fuck is Jamie Van Smith? <laughs> you know, who is this? Who is this player? Coming to the era of the <laughs> we should be signing players from the era of the Aye, but also these all these uh, players going out generated zero income because they were all let go on Bosman's wall. Say so, well, all the contracts expired. Mialbi went to Levante, Jamie Smith did the hug. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Scott Howe's loving it, of course. I do, and I always yeah, like when yeah. Scott Howe's fun comes up because you get the John Dal Thomas in face as well. It's always a good one. That, that wee smile, a cheeky smile. And uh, now the scattergun <laughs> transfer policy continued over our rivals on the other side of the city. So coming in the revolving door were Dado Prussell, Alex Ray, Marvin Andrews, Nacho Novo. Gregory Vignal, Dragan Mladanovic, I remember him vaguely, John Alan Boomsong, Mladanovic and Novo were the only two Rangers players that they paid a fee for. The rest were all Bosman deals. On the way out of the revolving door that summer at Ibrooks were Christian Nerlinger, Emerson, Nuno Capuccio, Hennig Berg, Michael Moles, both of the De Boer brothers, and mm. Mikel Arteta. The latter was the only one that generated any funds for transfers. And of course, in the winter window, a guy we've mentioned before, we talked about EBTs. They uh, quickly flipped John Allen Boomsong from a free transfer to eight million, sold him to Newcastle, and Graham Soonis was the manager of Newcastle. Is there a connection there? I well, wonder. Well, well, now can I just say something here? <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I will leave excuse Graham Soonis impression. Eh? Can I just say something here? Yeah, for sure. But you're like, yep. That is naughty. Yeah, after the now two guy this, stuff as well, you know. This is a guy who's got a thirty thousand pound EBT to this day is justified mm -hmm. on scouting for Rangers. Yep. Yet yeah, he was the manager of a football club at the time in the mm -hmm. English Premier League. Yep. Now I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. There's another manager we could find, or, or not we will find, because I'm not going to bother, but someone could find that has got the time mm -hmm. and be that good 
they can manage an English Premier League team that aren't top of the tree. Yep. I don't think Jody, I, I just, you know, I don't think Alex Ferguson found time to be a scout. Yeah. yeah so I don't that. think Josie found time to be a scout. Mm-hmm. But yeah, wow. The yeah. messiah of the English Premier League, it seems, Graham Souness, managed to find time to do scouting work for Rangers whilst managing in what is known as the toughest league in the mm-hmm. world. Fair they play. Did. Yeah. So they flipped John Allen Boom song, yeah, and you went off to Newcastle for eight million. They made the giant, they used that money to bring in Thomas Buffell and Barry Ferguson. But in terms of pre season friendlies for Celtic, uh, we had to be tour of Canada and North America. It's quite annoying that Liam's still here because we actually played in Canada during pre season. So, of course, we started with a game in London against Fulham because for the last few years we've either played at Loftus Road or Craven Cottage against QPR or Fulham. So, we played them and uh, we beat them 2 0. Then we headed stateside for a series of high profile friendlies. Celtic remember lost. those days? Yeah, I do remember those. Aye, but we lost 4 2 to Chelsea in Seattle before mm-hmm. losing 5 1 to Liverpool in Hartford, Connecticut. Celtic then beat uh, Manchester United 2 1 in Philadelphia. And then uh, they rounded off of a 1 0 loss in the Toronto Sky Dome. So, I was, uh, would a young, a young Cy Ferry have been on these tours, I think? I think he's mentioned this one before. I, I think, think he has. Right? The, yeah. The, 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 the tours to Americans. I mean, that's. That's mm. proper mixing it, mate. You know what I mean? Like, fucking, mm. what do we get now? Sturm Graz and shit. You know what I mean? Like, fucking. <laughs> we, are we camping in Austria or something like that? Or Switzerland against, like, oh, yeah, I know. I know, no glamour, for, like, there at all. And we actually finished, finally, if we just talk about Newcastle and Graham Soonis, all what goes around comes around. We actually finished our pre season with a 2 1 victory over Newcastle at Celtic Park. Henri Kamara scored the winning goal. Sadly, that was probably about the only. <laughs> winning goal that you got, but yeah, that wraps up our preseason. So we're just I hope someone had the... a fucking camera to take a photo at that moment because Aye. I swear to god, it very, was very a real. Kodak moment for that yeah. bastard. You very know, very what I mean? so we've just passed by those now in five minutes. And so, yeah, we'll do the musical and when we come back, we'll get a few more answers for the quiz because there's a lot tonight. And Russell's up against it himself, and then yeah, we'll be getting into yeah. the 2004 2005 season, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll be talking about Europe first off as well because uh. Compared to previous previous Boston European seasons, let's go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> deliberately trying to to cause contra- controversy. Well, I work in the media now, and you've got someone sitting there next to you who's an embarrassment to the media profession. He's an apologist. He's a charlatan. <laughs> Welcome back, Russell. So you just got there just in time, mate. You know, a professional at this, mate. A pro. Uh, but yeah, that's us back. Also in the chat, Try I saw... A, snack. Uh, a pee <laughs> and a snack. A pee and a snack in one minute and 50 seconds is really difficult. Aye. I can't imagine so, mate. But uh, quick, uh, quick uh, 
thing about the comments. Uh, John Boy Graham has said, oh, good show, guys. Cheers. And it's like, we're not finished yet. This is just half time. This is just half time. A few people replied to him and says, uh, yeah, the the long way halfway through the show, John. So don't go anywhere yet. We're not we even got into this season yet. Now, before, before we go on, though, we will get some more quiz answers from you, Russell, because obviously at the start of the show, I asked a question and there's 18 answers and Russell's up against a lot of answers. So rather than wait to the end, we'll just do some now. He's yes. already got four of them, but yeah, Celtic have been drawn against Barcelona, AC Milan and Shakhtar a lot in Europe this century. Can you, however, name all the goal scorers against them across that time? There are 18... I've just turned the comments off again, by the way, to clarify. Cool. Just so you know. No worries. So... so you've already gave me Alan Thompson, Scott McDonald, Mo Donati and Barry Robson. I've got Chris Sutton in the game Henrik scored. Yes, indeed. Sutton. I've got John Hartson picturing a header by post at the new camp. John Hartson indeed is correct. Jack Marcus. No. Of course. He's, yeah, of course. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about it Barcelona. I'm like, we didn't play. No. That's last three week. Teams here. Yeah, Shaka. Shaka. yeah Shaka. Stephen McManus, Milan away. Stephen McManus, Milan at home, but yeah, Stephen McManus, correct. Well, who, we bundled, two in one the, Celtic who bundled in the goal when we got beat 3 1 away at the San Siro? Stan Varga. Yeah. And yes. yeah, Varga, yeah, and Varga. You're right. You're right. Yep. Tony Watt, obviously. Yeah, of course. Wanyama, of course. Yep. Yes, indeed. And of course, the one my biggest ever bet win, when through eyes of Guinness, mm-hmm. and I didn't even I left the pub in a huff and went home. Not even oh, my wow. home pub at the time. Uh-huh. Because we got beat 2 1 by Barcelona in the last minute, the new camp. Uh huh. Yeah. I put a £2.50 bet on, it turns out. And I found out whilst going to put a coupon on on the, U- the Europa League UEFA Cup, I think it was still known then. No, it was it Europa League maybe? Um, anyway, I'm sitting in the boozer, there's only two punters in. Hmm. Usually it's busier than that. Um, I go to put a coupon on, I'm like, £1,280 in my balance. How? Nice. I've not put a bet on two days. Mm-hmm. Scroll through the bets. I had bet through drunken Guinness eyes. Uh-huh. Samaras to score first, Barcelona to win 2-1. Oh! Yeah. I, but the thing is, I don't bet against Celtic mm-hmm. 99 times at 100. The fact that I've left the pub and went home in a huff that they beat us tells you all you need to know. I can't even remember putting that bet on. Two days later, I found out, and it's the biggest bet I'd ever had. Two pound fifty, one thousand two hundred eighty-two pound. I can go back. Oh wow! Something like that, yeah. Nice. And Samara- it was, uh, it was Sammy. Samaras has got two goals against him because he scored the next mm-hmm. the, the next season against them and the six-one loss at the new camp. The uh they gave us a very good scale for that. Yeah, Samaras is good against them. So that's a lot of them ticked off. So we'll come back to the rest of them at the end of the show. That's but not that's, bad though. What are we up to? That's way oh that's on my own. All by myself. You've got twelve. You've got twelve so far. Good work. Good work, mate. Well done. Oh, well done, mate. You're flying, oh, mate. That, that worries me. There's six more. Aye. Well, let's get started then on the European Paul stuff. Because again, <laughs> Paul Telfer seems to be a name that gets thrown out a lot on this. I've noticed. Well, let's start with the European stuff anyway. Barcelona, AC Milan, and Shakhtar. Because uh, as you see, the this headline reads "Heroes to Zeros." Because after the last few years in Europe, we became a bit of a force. But this European campaign. Doesn't quite go according to plan, but the good news is, as the league winners from 2004, we are straight into the Champions League. The coefficient is really strong at this point, so there's no qualifiers to worry about, which again kind of makes the transfer business a wee bit more jarring when you think about it. You had all season to prepare, all pre season. Explain yeah. that to me. Do you know what I mean? Like, explain the logic there and how this guy, Peter Lowell, has been held as some sort of, of legend. He has got to be. Mm. The most underwhelming Aaron Moy of a <laughs> CEO ever. Ah, uh, oh he man, sat, he sat so comfy, so pretty. Um, right, it's on his head. This, this is under his watch. It is, isn't it? The only when I was reading that out there, I was thinking about it and going, wait a minute, this is just like... You're me up again. 
Hi. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'll I'll try and not do that. I'll just, we'll we'll power through this, mate. So Celtic drew, as I say, a really really difficult group. They got Barcelona and AC Milan, two of the biggest clubs in world football. Two clubs, of course, Rivaldo had just played for in recent years as well. There's another link, and we also drew the relatively unknown oil-rich Ukrainian club Shakhtar Donetsk, because the only real Ukrainian club that had made a mark in the years before that was Dynamo Kiev, obviously the phenomenal strike partnership of Shevchenko and Rebrov, who were doing bits for a few years. But Shakhtar, they were a little less unknown, but Jesus Christ, when unless, you saw their team... Unless huh? you played championship manager... Julius oh, no, Agahauer. Agahauer, oh, in the yeah. and uh, Timoshuk. Ah, Timashuk, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm, I remember Timashuk as well. Aye. I was yeah, always they... like, even I seen like for like Timashuk, I was like, oh, that's what he looks like. I've signed you 30 times, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Julius Agahauer is a champ manager 0102, a cult hero without a oh, shadow of a doubt. But yeah, they're, they're, we'll find out very, very soon about the strength of this squad. So, of course, the support to the entire group was all around Henrik Larsson, who joined Barcelona in the summer, and he was coming back to Celtic Park already after his departure. So, well, so you knew it was written in the stars what was going to happen. But Celtic hadn't lost a home game in the Champions League, nor had they lost a home game in Europe since Ajax won the second leg of a Champions League qualifier in 2001. So we had a good... Good record, to say the least at home. Oh, God, what we would do to have a home record like that now, Russell? Barcelona came to town, though, and they broke that record by blowing Celtic away, making up for the UEFA Cup loss to the hoops just a few months before. Deco put Barcelona ahead, but then, something we've talked about before, Chris Sutton with that slide tackle goal that he scored. I don't think we were blown away. I don't think we were blown the, away. The, do you think so, Ned? No, 3-1. I thought Barcelona were pretty comfortable in the end in that one. I think we got. I think we got that away goal. Eh, not the away goal. The the mm. equalising goal, I should say, mm. by Sutton. And I think the belief came back into Celtic Park all over yeah. again, like it would have. Yeah. Whether it was Henrik there or Henrik not there, yeah. Yeah. And I think the way Sutton celebrates was almost. Mm. They feel like they're going to. Oh, right. I think he was pumped. Yeah. I yeah. think it was the most. Oh. When you watch his celebration, Aye. that's as pumped as you've ever seen in his celebration. I think that's a mm. guy going, fuck them. Mm. Yep. Like, who cares? Yeah. If, you know, I, I know it's shite the storyline, but me and I'm my best pals and get it right round them. I, 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 I think, I think then it was if we'd went on and won that 2 1 at that time, we just believed, mm -hmm. even yeah, against well, the underwhelming circumstances. Phil, I really do think, yeah, I know even if they're being better than us, maybe we're not mm -hmm. used to them dominating the ball as much, but someday yeah. it's back to form. We're one all again against the best of Europe. It's what we do. Mm. It's what well, we do the, against the best teams at this time, Phil. Well, well, the finish itself from Sutton, obviously we've talked about the slide the slide tackle finish that he does. This one's a bit different. He still does a slide tackle finish, but the ball doesn't just go in a straight line into the back post. It goes upward into the far corner. He actually, uh, the connection with it is phenomenal. It is an and, amazing and, and finish. You always talk about, you always talk about finishes. Uh, a goalkeeper saves and it, but the ball bounces in front of them. How difficult it is for them just to save it? How difficult is it for Sutton with the outside of his boot to yep. slide tackle finish it and at the top bins? Fucking it's a joke. genius. It's, it's a, a joke brilliant a finish. finish. It's a player, a player taking responsibility, but also showing. He he is he's talented, mate. This is a proper striker. It's a brilliant finish. It's Dembele it. does that, mate, and that's a highlight reel on Twitter. Oh God, I I mean I can remember the time when that that no disrespect to Dembele there, by the way, because I love him. <laughs> but I, Sutton doesn't get the credit, yeah. I think, for these sort of uh, there's finesse in that as well. Yeah, there is. There is. And again, we talked about that when we did the Chris Sutton episode. He's, just because he's a big guy, you don't think he's just some big clogger. He had a lot one. of finesse. He had a lot. Another Let's do another, another Chris oh, Sutton episode. Ah, Why not? We didn't touch that. He's happy when he talks about his Birmingham and Aston Villa days. But he gets his back in level terms. Ludovic Juli restores Barcelona's lead in the 78th minute. But then it happened. Henrik Larsson, who'd come off the bench just after the hour mark, was on Quickly, hand. But Juli. The other player of that Monaco team that got to the final. And he went to Barcelona again. Another that, one that crosses our path. Right? He went for Monaco to Barca was because of that Monaco run at the final. Would have actually, yeah. Sorry, you? Right, no, sorry to interrupt, but just... But yeah, the boring. 82nd minute, Henrik Larsson, the whole world stands still and he... Uh, 
Obviously, he picks up the loose ball, chests it down, goes round the keeper, puts it in the net. Now, quite, quite astoundingly, and this is this is, I, I can't. This is a weird one to word. I'm trying to figure out what this. He got booed by some fans. Some fans definitely booed him, which to me is like, no, right, no. So, so Phil, yeah, fans booed yeah. Henrik Larson. Only a minority. It's definitely not. But there were boos when he touched some the fans. ball. Yeah, yeah, some fans. Okay. If you hmm? say Joseph Juranovic is decent but not great, how oh, yeah. loud are the boos then? <laughs> you get about 99 quote tweets calling you all sorts of stuff, mate. That's what you get <laughs> for your troubles. Yep. I know. What now? I mean, I'm, I know. I mean, I give up. Because obviously we've had in recent years talk about the tourist element at uh, Celtic Park with the Champions League and players going off getting subbed and getting standing ovations and stuff and Modric obviously a phenomenal player, I think it was Iniesta got one in 2013 and Arjen Robin definitely got a standing ovation when Bayern beat his 2-1 and uh, Brendan Rodgers either, I can't remember he got one but this is a guy that gave us seven incredible years as we've just waxed lyrical about in the first hour of the show again talking about that final year that he gave us he didn't phone it in. He absolutely smashed it. 41 plus goals. All the goals he scored. Just whatever. And it's like, I know he's playing for the opposition. We do have a game to win, but just don't react at all. But there were definitely boos on the night. But I say it was a very much a minority. It wasn't like 60,000 people how booing you, him. That how, would you, how would you describe it, Phil? I, I think when I look, how did I feel at the time? I, I couldn't at that time be angry at Henrik, right? No, same. As I say, he's the only guy I'd ever cried over when he left, and I admit it. And I remember my dad, he was always challenging over me. He was like, what's going on? And I'm like, no, 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 mate. I went up to my room, and I sobbed into my pillow. I remember sobbing into my pillow on a wee Sanyo TV when, when Henrik left, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I, I couldn't bring myself to be angry at him. See now... I look at it, I just respect it. Yeah. I respect what he did, and I go, that's how good he was. You needed a job done. Henrik was better than what you had in the pitch. Mm. Look at Meryl Wyatt's comment, by the way. That's quite appropriate. <laughs> a what ball what? tickling goes on in the bus, mate? <laughs> it was like one more time Henrik scoring at Celtic Park, Meryl. But he still tickled my buzz. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just it was like the written in the stars moment, it but shit. I liked it. It yeah. was shit. But I look, I, I see nowadays, for, you get like players playing for Brighton, right? They joined Chelsea, they score against Chelsea, they go, don't, That's right. don't, don't yep. come near me. And you're like, oh, go and fuck off. Do you know what I mean? You've got no loyalty at that club. Henrik mm -hmm. had given us seven years of his peak years. Mm -hmm. See, when he didn't want to celebrate against us playing for. Arguably one of, if not the most famous club in Europe, an institution of European football, Barcelona, where Maradona and etc. has played. See when he's going, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep. Or uh, just head down, run back to halfway right. line. That was so genuine, so authentic, so it real. Was. Nowadays, <laughs> as I say, some country's played fucking 12 months at Wolves. You know what I mean? <laughs> Joins Man City, scores right. against the wing, goes, oh, please, guys. And they went, Shut up. There was about 12 folk uh, in all of you. Do you know what I mean? This was, I... he knew he'd done it in a theatre mm. of 60,000 people who worshipped him. It was his, It was Henrik's church. Was. Give me joy in my heart. Give me Larson. Henrik Larson is the king of kings. He he's is. done it there because he's a ruthless striker that we loved his ruthlessness. We admired it. We adored it for seven years. He had chose his peak time to do it mm. in his own church. For him to come back and score for them, I didn't feel he was, he was, uh, I didn't feel he was doing something against the grain. And I also think his celebration, his non-celebration, mm -hmm. yep. was so truthful. It was so yep. real. There's Genuine. such a big difference, Phil, between all this bullshit now. Do you get uh, that? I do. do get I do, from? mate. Yep. The I first one I can remember that, doing it was Tevez. Overlooked. Tevez done it against West Ham, I think, when he was playing for Man City. And I'm pretty sure, quite a contrast to it, remember when Adebayor scored against Arsenal for Man City around about the same time, and he did the actual opposite. All uh, for the Adebayor thing. All for it. 
I'm Off sure Tevez is the first one I can remember in modern football, but you're right about Larson. I had a bit summed up what it was. He goes, I played for a London club for three years who don't give any kudos yeah. to their players. Mm-hmm. They're all sitting and eating prawn sandwiches. They don't give a fuck, so fuck Aye. them. <laughs> and they want to boo once you leave them, mm-hmm. even though you've scored 50 goals. Henrik knew he was a dog. Yeah. Henrik was real in that in that was. feedback. That was awesome. And yeah. aye, it's so, so far removed from mm. these fake moments you see. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're right. I played for Southampton for a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's really tough. It's really tough. Shut up. And yes, Patrick McGlory, Adebayor did run the whole way for the park. He really, I, literally did. It was just mental. to reflect on the Martin O'Neill years, because obviously we've got to bookmark it. If Henry could run the way, run away and done a 2000-2001 Tommy Johnson. Oh yeah, that's right. Even then I'd have probably given him it. <laughs> He's an opposition player. He's getting paid by another team now. So, but again, as he, it was fate. It was written in the stars it was going to happen, and there was a sort of well, we knew that was coming. You know, just it was meant to be. So Celtic got off to a bad start by losing three one at home. The Very first, quickly as well, who swapped yep. shots at the end? Sutton and Henrik. Oh, nice, nice. Who wrote the forward in uh, Sutton's autobiography? Henrik. Henrik. I just think stuff like this. You remember the class of of Larson. This, this is a real guy. class. Yeah. They two swapped the jerseys at the end. Sutton and Larson. Of course. Had to be, didn't it? How had cool to. is that, though? Yeah. That's, that's, had to, that's awesome. That is respect, man. That is what it's all about. Now they They're swapped doing. the jerseys at the end. I didn't know if you knew that or not, but I... Ah, nice. Nah, I, I totally forgot that one, so nice one, mate. I would appreciate learning a, a new fact every day. That's a good one, man. Uh, but unfortunately, mate, we have to uh, talk about another another bad result because unfortunately, like you know, good home results were well, obviously a thing at that point. Barcelona have broken the duct. Unfortunately, good home results for Celtic in Europe usually a bad away result comes, and sadly, yeah, it's the first home game we play we're away to the away to the San Siro to play AC Milan. So we start with Barcelona and AC Milan the first two fixtures, and incredibly, we're not too far away from getting a point because in the seventy fourth minute. Stan Varga, as we've mentioned before, he equalises. Shevchenko would put AC Milan ahead quite early on, but we're given as good as we got. I say we got an equaliser 15 minutes to go, and then, as I always say, the most Celtic thing that can happen does happen. In the 89th and the 90th minute, Pippo and Zaghi scores, and then Andrea Piolo scores to make it 3-1, that close to getting our first point on our travels, which would have been mm-hmm. at the San Siro, but yeah. Hey, but look at the financial disparity. Oh, the financial disparity, of course, of course, yes. Tell me that, you know, when Stan Varga, free transfer from Sunderland Reserves, mm-hmm. is scoring goals against Nesta, Maldini, was, yeah. go on, Bobby C, you know what I mean? Like, think about all these guys. There's a Sunderland mm-hmm. Reserve who was 31. 32. Yep. 32, mm-hmm. in fact. Scoring the header against them. Can't be done now. Can't be done. Can't impossible. Can't be done. I don't know, Bossy, but the you... Where was the belief then? There was the belief then. Oh, well. We're better than them. Who does that? Hmm. Someone See, who's... The difference is now, and it's not in a bad way, because post who does want them to have the belief he does, but mm-hmm. they're playing in a way that is about the, the, the philosophy, the style, more yep. than... The eye to eye. Martin Neal looking at fucking Stan Varga. I know I got you for Sunderland Reserves, but you're the best defender in Europe. See these bastards. See every set piece. There might be World Cup winners or potential World Cup winners, maybe not yet, but European Cup winners in there. You'll beat them in the I've seen you in training. Mm-hmm. You'll beat yeah. them in there. Watch him. See their number four. Just fucking nick in front of him. Boom. They believed. Yep. They believed. There's such a difference now. Mm-hmm. It would be when was the last time we even took a team like Milan to ten minutes to go? Do you know what I mean? Away from home. Was it Milan themselves in all seven? With, with having that gutting feeling as well. Oh, right. oh yeah. And that Aye. gutting feeling, as you rightfully point out, we were devastated that it came to what it did. Yeah. Uh, honestly, mental. 
It's a, I don't know as well about you, but this obviously is that AC Milan team of the mid two thousands. They go on and get to the Champions League final this coming season. That's the one with Liverpool with the throw with the three goal lead. But I always think see this AC Milan team and like that starting eleven. You see it posted all over Twitter. People go, oh, what a team this was. I always think of Pro Evo Soccer at this time. This when Pro Evo is like the king. And I just think of that Milan squad. Game, man. Dida, Nesta, Stam, Maldini. I believe they had who was the right back? Was it a Brazilian player? Did they have Cafu at that point, or did Cafu, Cafu retire? Uh, 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 Cafu would have been, yeah, Peel, because he left. Peel he was left. off Kaka and Gattuso, and then it'd be yep. Shevchenko and Kresko up front. I Ambrosino, Shevchenko, I'm, and Zagi. Yeah. Just stupid, just stupid film. And we nearly, we nearly got a point out of them. Is he Stan Varga? Despite you want to talk about disparity, Stan Varga getting an equalizer. Sunderland is a Slovakian international I, who would sing for Sunderland for 500 grand. Couldn't get a game for them. <laughs> we, nearly, we nearly snatched a point for that team. That's insane with that. The, the At guy 32 like Stan years Varga. old, by the way. Oh, what the yeah, hell, man. come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do you know what? It was an even kill then, though, eh? It was fair. It was fairer All back right. then, Phil. Aye, it was. Give me it. Don't give me it. <laughs> well, well, how do we describe the next one? Because we're playing, I say, the unknown Shakhtar Donetsk, but of course they're very much uh, an oil-rich funded team. They absolutely trounced us 3-0 in the game out in the Ukraine. But yeah, they had guys like Brandao, who would come back to play against us a few years later. Uh, Brazil striker, they had was it an Italian striker called Locatelli. Remember guys like this? They had the Croatian number one keepers at Pits, Pitskova, something this, like that. Is this the year they... Who was up front? Uh, they had Brandao definitely at this point. No, no, no. Locatelli might be the leader. No, I don't think that was his name. The boy that Pit- sang for Torino. Oh. Is it, uh, they, I think Locatelli yeah, was, was the name in my head. Locatelli, but... maybe that's the name. Maybe I, that's the name. Look, I don't know. But he was 29. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was his big money move. Because he'd been, Aye. I think, second or third top scorer in Serie A the year before. Mm. For Torino, unfancy right. Torino. And Aye. Shakhtar had spent big because he got he came with Ray, we were like, you need to watch him. Like he's mm. peak now. That's right. Good fucking I forgot about uh, that. The goalkeeper was called Petkovic. He was Croatia's number one keeper. A Croatian international playing for Shakhtar, mate. He must be good a Croatian international, mate. Petkovic. Petkovic. I was a goalkeeper. Now, do I you thought, remember? You remember I, one of these players? You remember Dario Serna, yeah? Yeah, do you remember talk, their, spoke, about him, spoke about one in Do you remember their other fullback, a Romanian? Mm-hmm. With the worst name possible. Like, what's one of the worst set oh, names a person could have? I think Brendan Rogers is familiar <laughs> with the terminology. Yes. Razvan Rat. Rat. <laughs> I remember him. Is he the Romanian player that injured John Kennedy? No. Or am I just associating Rat with... Demia. <laughs> okay. A guy go, who played for Wolves. Ah, okay. Right. Who took Henri Camara's place. There's always a Celtic link. Henri <laughs> Camara joins us on loan. Ian <laughs> Ganea is the new number one striker for Wolves. That's who injures John Kennedy. Had you know, he not joined Wolves, would he be Romania's number one striker? Probably not. But once you go to England, yeah. you no, know, you know how there's that game where it's, it was at six degrees of Kevin Bacon, and everything links back to Kevin Bacon in six That's degrees or less. Lucarelli, Lucarelli, that was it. That's the name, Bob. Oh. That is the one. He was about twenty nine, mm-hmm. and he leaves Syria for Ukraine. Lucarelli, you That's tell me. One. There's no EBT involved there, Bobby. Uh, but, uh, no, sorry. I mean, uh, 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 you know, not high wages uh, in Shakhtar <laughs> at that time. But uh, yeah, that was some of the some of the stars at the Shakhtar team. We're going to say they chose his three nil out there. But after three games, it's three losses. But we do get back on track with the uh, the home game against Shakhtar. The double header. Alan Thompson scores an indirect free kick. Free kick. Watch that. Uh, yes, Petrov lays it off to him, and he just. Pff, Battles it right through the, the line of players like inside the box. Mm. Uh, you get that opportunity. Yeah. No wonder they were panicking and trying to convince the referee otherwise. Mm-hmm. Because yep. Alan Thompson, for me at this point, there's a reason we're all now at this point campaigning almost for England. It's so bizarre. Mm-hmm. But for that, we're wanting them to improve their team. What the fuck are we thinking? But that is how it felt. She felt so unjust. They are yeah. crying out. 
for a left footer, he has got his mm -hmm. left foot as good as David Beckham's right. Yep. That's how we felt. It was that sweet. You knew he was hitting the back of the net then. No problem. I yeah, no and uh, no it looks like Shakhtar actually did the homework regarding uh, Thompson's free kicks compared to Liverpool, which we talked about before, where they knew the fear. They had the fear. They knew what was coming. And yeah, he batters it in. They've got no chance at all. But then, Russell, we're off to a win. We've got a win final. We've got some points on the board. And then something incredible happens in the most unlikely of places. We get our first ever result away from home. We get a point in the new camp at Bar against Barcelona. John Hart. I've told you about it. Big bad John. Back. Big back bad John. Post. Yes. The back post header. Aye. Aye. Yeah. John Hartson had cancelled out Samuel Eto's goal from earlier in the first half. And yeah, we hold on in the second half. We get a 1 1 draw. So incredibly, after losing our first three games, we've now got ourselves in a position going into the final game, where it's a bit home against AC Milan, where we're ahead of Shakhtar. Shakhtar have only got three points. We're on four. So it's like, well, if we beat AC Milan and we have got a good home record still, the Barcelona loss is the only blotch at this point, then we're going through to the Europa League anyway. We've sat on the UEFA Cup at that point, so we've salvaged third place. A draw might be enough because Shakhtar mm -hmm. are playing Barcelona. Surely Shakhtar, who've only got one win and they're playing Barcelona, Henrik might do us a wee favour as well. But come on, Barcelona... Okay. I think as well, like Shaq, they're getting unexpected points. Doesn't yes. Happen. Doesn't it's happen at all. I'm not seeing any similar, uh, similarities. Similarities. I'm not seeing any, Phil, honestly. I mean, yeah. go on, tell me. Did Shaq get points against Barca? Well, unfortunately, yes, they did. The aforementioned Julius Agahauer scored the brace. So when I came out of that Kasabian concert that night, I remember asking somebody nearby who had it on his phone. I was like, because this is the early stages of smartphones and this guy was able to get a result up. And uh, he was like, uh, are we doing now now? And I was like, oh, wait, is that enough to get us through? Because a point might have been enough, depending how they got on. No, no, no. Julie Sagahauer scored the brace and Shakhtar beat Barcelona 2 0. And we finished bottom of the group. Oh, man. <laughs> the 10 only can happen to Celtic. <laughs> Unreally. It is, mate. It is. So. Yeah, all this talk about Barca and Celtic, you know, football friends. Barca didn't do us a favour that night, for sake. But yeah, we were out on our arse at the Christmas time, which was unusual for Martin O'Neill and his uh, European exploits, because uh, we were we usually gave teams a good going, but that one was that was a terrible campaign, that one compared to previous European campaigns where we could really give teams a, a real go, but it just fell flat. It was just a, a, a foreshadowing of things to come, really, how the season was going to go, but yeah, getting a nil nil draw in Milan and then getting the news that Shakhtar had beaten Barca anyway, so it was like oh, for fuck's sake, so yeah, out we go. Not many fond memories there, Russell, of that campaign, to be said. I think <sighs> um, when you look back there, I don't know, not it's not the same similar similarities, Phil. Yep. But one fundamental is true. The Champions League wasn't showing the respect it deserves for the revenue, albeit far less than what it is percentage-wise now to what Celtic's turnover would be, but still very significant, massively significant, in fact. Was never shown the respect in the transfers. Also, double that down, double it down, if you double will. Yep. With a manager who is of greatness already by this stage. Yes. A hero oh. among men with far more reason to be heralded as a messiah than the, the current incumbent, not to take anything away from him, by the way, but does it not worry you that even when Martin O'Neill, after four of those seasons, unbelievable seasons that he's brought Celtic, mm -hmm. he can't be trusted, valued, rewarded with anything resembling a Champions League budget. After getting to a European final, that should have just been the it's magic ticket every, every window after that. Just stop. Like, it's a fucking yeah. disgrace. The, 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 you Obviously, you spoke so well last week about the, what we did, you know, after the UEFA Cup. But this now, is Henrik yeah. leaving? So that's two devastations, two summers in a row. Mm -hmm. Despite the successes, we all know the team was great both those years, right? 
green and white wash, Seville. But also it was league title lost in the last day. Seville lost an extra time. Mm -hmm. Then it was Kenrick leaving, but the green and white wash. Yeah. No respect for the tournament you're about to enter. No respect yeah. for it. No I... respect for it. It's Celtic has no respect for the Champions League still now, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Do you believe but big boys talk at AGMs? Oof, we're not oh. satisfied. What are you not satisfied for? Because as far as I last checked, you knew you were in the Champions League in May. Mm -hmm. Did that? May you the knew. 11th. Yep. You knew One. you were in it mm -hmm. five months ago. Aye. Free transfers. Sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Loan signings. Sound familiar? <laughs> familiar. And freakishly what we're talking when about this season. Club yep. learn? When yeah. will this fucking club learn? Mad. To dine at the top table, you have to treat the top table. You have to mm -hmm. lay it with the yep. forks and the knives and the spoons yep. in the right mm -hmm. fucking order. Yep. We if take you it don't... for granted. We just take mm -hmm. the 6,000 season tickets for granted and gamble for that, mate. That's honestly the truth. Right. If you don't uh, learn from history, you're destined to repeat it. And here well, we are we talking about the 2004-2005 season. I think this is the beauty of the nostalgias, mate, because mm -hmm. the amount of comparisons we draw... Are they not just fantastic? It's freakish. It's actually freakish. It's worrying at the same time, but it's so true. So, so, so true. Again, look at this, the 4 5 season. No How qualifiers to play straight in. Alan Thompson is there. Now in England, Chris Sutton should be back in the England squad. We've all agreed on that. He's 31. Yeah. Stylian Petrov is at this point, and I'm going to be, this might sound bold, a box-to-box -box midfielder that I think could have done the box-to-box -box midfield role at any club in the UK at this time. Agreed. Agreed. One of the best. Yeah. Yep. We have players. John Hartson is 28, 29. He's a wee bit younger. Mm -hmm. Now the most natural finisher in Scotland. Yep. This team needs tweaked, not changed. Mm. Yeah. It needs tweaked. It needs improved on. It needs finishing touches, not bulked up. What did mm. we do? Bulked. We padded. Both. Indeed. However, but I want to talk huh? one thing that yeah. I think we've missed, and I think mm -hmm. to be honest, there's a bit of an oversight on it, Phil. And mm -hmm. I did message this to you uh, last night. There's the homework. Janino's a dud. Is he mm -hmm. a dud? He had a good debut, and then it quickly, I think, he had went assists, down. Mate, an assist record. I've not got it to hand. That's not that bad. The startles would probably mm -hmm. go. Okay, he was pretty yeah. good at Celtic. His stats yeah. are not bad, mate. He just had this expectation of Rivaldo yeah. that he wasn't yeah. Rivaldo. Aye. Also a World Cup winner. But Janino's debut, I think, just very quickly. Uh -huh. Go watch it back. Irvin Boy, guys, right? The, he, he has, as you sent me, Phil, he's, he, mm -hmm. he's, don't, don't watch it now. Stay on the channel. Yeah. <laughs> Stay, on the <laughs> Stay on the bus. Stay on the bus. I in the channel. The bus. Stay on the bus. But, <laughs> Trust me, trust me, Janino's debut against Rangers, and mm. that is in for the cold, by the way. No yeah. easing in. Oh, he's unfit. He's no match fit. Throw him in. Throw me in. Watch him take the pish. He was, he was... unreal that yep. day. Yep. And he had other moments. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually think he wasn't what Martin O'Neill needed. No, he, no, I thought that at the time. Magide. I would still need a midfielder. He did yeah. McGeady. Was mm. that guy? Yeah. This is now the right. guy having. He's he's now starting every game. Remember, because he scored at Tyne Castle the season before the end. Mm. This yep, is now McGee getting yep. integrated. This is now McGee getting integrated. Aye. Let him be that guy. Let him Aye. just have a free reign. Jorginho mm. O'Neill's like fucked. I utilize him in this team, which was a team of, let's be honest, brilliant pros, what mm. courses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely will that. Juninho ain't Lubo. No. Albeit, if afforded the time, the patience mm. and respect that a Slovakian international <laughs> was given at 33, yeah. why would the Brazilian World Cup winner not, not. be given that? Yeah, Sometimes would. people just don't fit the narrative, Phil. Yes, indeed. See if a Croatian international carries more weight Aye. nowadays 
They were a Brazilian World Cup winner does. Does, yeah. I know. Mm. Tell me football is not fickle. And that's the best point about it all. Because no yeah. one's right, no one's wrong. What I always hate is the black and white of everything, Phil. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say here right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look how many contradictions yeah. there are throughout even our own support, throughout mm. time and right up to this day. But mm. Janino is a case in point, surely. He was given yeah. no time, mate. Yeah, he was actually gone before the season ended. He was released on a free transfer in April. Uh, he went back to play in Brazil. So, I mean, he didn't even see you at the full season. So, it's like, what Compare his How debut with Aaron Moyes. Oh, see, I remember his debut against Rangers. That's the goal, when, the game when Alan Thompson oh. scores the wonder right. goal at the end on off the crossbar. It's absolutely... Dancing around their players, mate. One-twos, one-twos. Mm. And you're right, he's, he's playing a different sport. And there's actually another game. I think it was a couple of months later. Maybe mm. a month later. But you know he's trying to impress. He's so eager. Momo Silla, skip, uh, Momo Silla skins about 40 players, cuts it back. Juninho is there to tap it into it, and Silla bypasses it. Like to, I think it's Hartson at the back post, mm -hmm. and you see Juninho going, why have you done that? I don't fit in here. <laughs> like, Aye. the easier cutback was to him, and Juninho barely celebrates, and I'm like, I kind of get it, because he's calling out all animatedly for the ball. It's the yeah. easier pass. Yeah, they play it to the back post of Hartson, and I think he's went. They've got a clique, and maybe that's true. Maybe, maybe, maybe the squad yeah. has become a bit cliquey. And yeah. do you think maybe this is what Strachan then tries to dismantle? Definitely, there definitely the was for Strachan. Uh, he's dealing with that. Mm. 100% he was dealing with that. But you're talking there about transfers, so Russell, we'll get on to it because this one, as headline says, he who would be king, because in January of that year, after we've had our Champions League eggs that are really underwhelming, we've went through six months. Ronby Kamara as a forward option after bringing in and say we've discussed that one and definitely wasn't going to work. But on the final day of the January window, an opportunity presented itself. Now, Russell, you've mentioned this before, so please indulge me because you say the story is I originally thought him and Bobby Robson had a fallen out, but you tell me Alan Shearer is the culprit again because Craig Bellamy, Newcastle and Wales striker, who was doing not too bad at Newcastle at that point, I'm pretty sure... Newcastle were so what did, in and out of the what Champions you, League. What you just said? What did you think? I thought Bobby Robson and King no. Bellamy had a phone out. It no. was Shearer. Bobby liked Aye. again. This is the, the, the this is where you go from the transitioning of managers to the yep. modern day. Yes. Right. And I think if you if you allow me, Phil, for just mm -hmm. two minutes to self indulge, mm -hmm. I think why like, the bus has done so well. And why the wee fella maybe has went a bit ready salted, even more ready salted. Ready salted. No offense, I can't be asked to argue with him anymore. If you want to constantly have people that are on the halfway house on message, mm -hmm. your content or your team in this case will become flat. Hmm. What we've got on the bus, and I have been drawn to time and time again, is characters. I've seen a future for you. I said this. Fuck. Think how far before Bastalgia began. I told you, I think you're going to be the next host. But I'm working you to that profile. Remember we said it? Mm -hmm. And you were like... I do, yeah. And I can, I'm telling you right now, you were like, what the fuck's he on about? I'm like, <laughs> Phil, just let me... I'm going to boost your profile. I'm going to get you on more and more. I think you'll be hosting shows before you know it. No one knew what Bastalgia was then. No. But in my mind, I knew you'd be hosting something. I yep. could see it. Yep. Mark Kearney joins. I can deal with a character. Mm -hmm. no. Terry's a character. Yeah. Liam, the punk duck world, he's seen life, oh, mate. Do you me. really think he worries what some twat on Twitter says about his opinion on Greg Taylor or on YouTube or on fucking folk putting wigs on and that? Need to care. Need to cares, mate. <laughs> Need to fucking cares, mate. Need to care. <laughs> I've, we've built the reason the bus is doing well mm. is because there's loads of characters. Yeah. It's really difficult at times to manage. Mm. You see, when I see some a bit of carnage, it's why we do well. There's mm. no yes man. Nifty is a yes man to me. I didn't... No, no one's on it for that. <laughs> mm. And I don't want it. I don't want it. No. That's, that's what I think has worked. Mm. See, when Sunil was getting told players to sign, that changes. Right. Listen to what Postecoglou says that mirrors on you. He signs people, not players. 
Yes, that's true. I mean, that's a positive cool quote that I'm pretty sure Martin O'Neill went good. Yeah. Very good. That that explains, you know, finally someone's uh, been able to justify me signing mm. Neil Lennon three times. Fuck. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, because let's be honest, uh -huh. O'Neill wanted them for their bollocks as much as he wanted them for their boots. Make yeah. No oh God, I, I was all the camaraderie and character was as big a thing as ability. God, yeah. And O'Neill wanted, and it was it's different. Chris, that's it. I've seen fuck it. It's an echo chamber. You fuck off, you wee bastard. <laughs> I'm not getting trolled again. Uh, uh, but let's be honest. Mm. O'Neill did sing, guys. Right. Uh, initially, he'd been given the checkbook. Mm -hmm. Then it was players pushed on you that were in our bracket. And naturally, that means O'Neill's going, okay. Mm -hmm. From this smaller bracket and devalue bracket, I need to sign the best player from that bracket. Yep. As opposed to getting my way of getting the player and the person. Yep. And he might have at times probably signed folk for the person. Yeah. He thinks like a Stephen on show. Freaking UEFA Cup. What was he, was he a quadruple winner at under Julie? A Liverpool on show on Ipia. They won a treble in the 2001. I treble it was. I then they won the Super Cup, so it was a quadruple. I did it. Oh, so yeah, yeah. A, Super Cup came in. That's right. Aye, aye. You have a cut. You have a cup. On show Ipia. And he's went, that on show's got bollocks. That'll do. But it was like he was fading force. He wasn't, he doesn't have the ability, though. And that's the issue. Mm -hmm. That is the issue. No. There's something in the chat that I just need to quickly clear up because stupidly I totally forgot I mentioned this earlier on. Graham Soonis is a Newcastle manager at this point. Now the chat are saying he definitely was Soonis. Now here's the thing, guys. Russell is an expert on all RC things Alan Shearer's ever done. So Russell, I believe that you have the story on Alan Shearer and Craig Bellamy's falling out because I know how much you dislike Alan Shearer. And I believe you when you say that he is responsible for the falling out with Craig Bellamy. I do believe mm. Soonis could be, but yeah. I thought it was Bobby Robson was still, but I, I actually mentioned it earlier on the show, the Newcastle manager at that point is actually Graham Soonis. But no, if you've watched Postalgia over the time, uh, whenever yeah. Shearer's name comes up, like, I mean, Russell said to me earlier on, says, don't get me angry again, Phil. And I've just mentioned no, that. No, no, this is good. This is good. <laughs> you because that, guys. There was a huge, there was a huge debate about how the fuck did we get Bellamy then? But Bellamy is showing mm -hmm. his phone mm. on... Celtics, I think it must have been the was it a winter camp or whatever it was, maybe it was just in the, on a bus to an away game. Mm. But he's showing his phone uh -huh. to the pros that with him, and he's going, What do you want me to send this back to this cunt? And it's Shearer going, You are a wanker, you'll never play for this club again. Bellamy's on the Celtic bus going, Fuck you, you fucking dick. You think you run that club? <laughs> so their relationship was. That yeah. I'd imploded way, way before. Aye. Way before. Mm. When you sniffed an opportunity or was given wind of an opportunity, mm -hmm. or, here's my take, was allowed to take advantage of the opportunity. Yes. Because word came round, oh, oh, what's that? Rangers are about to announce Barry Ferguson's return from the EPL from Blackburn Rovers for £5 mm. million. Pounds. We need to fight that. Did you say Bellamy might be available, O'Neill? Yep. O'Neill sitting there going, okay, yeah, of course I still want him, but this is a piss take now. It's mm -hmm. the 31st of January. He's been available for the summer. Him mm -hmm. and Shearer's relationship had broke down in pre-season, if not the season before. Yep. There's nothing to do with Bobby Robson. The two of them I'd, Shearer and Bellamy were at loggerheads. Shearer is a wanker. I know. Ask Henry Henry Larson, mm -hmm. supporter, singer, uh, or him, him prayer of Henrik. Mm -hmm. We went for Shearer, but he is a wanker. Right? Mm -hmm. Trust me, the world knows that. This is the guy stamped on Neil Lennon's leg, uh, neck. He did, yeah. And I've read Lennon's book. I'm well versed on all this. Mm -hmm. And 
in Lennon's book, he says, the reason I've got no respect for Alan Shearer isn't because of the song. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, but for someone to never apologise for that. Yep. It's ridiculous. He goes, I've done loads on a pitch that I've regretted. You always apologise. Like, I've, I was fucking weird. He goes, it's just professional. Never. Never does Shearer apologise. He doesn't back down. He doesn't double down. He fucks off. Oh, just as well, I wish Roy Keenan did get his hands on him. Everything like Shearer, oh, Shearer would have had him by the balls. I'm like, ah, Shearer was fucking Sutton's fucking spit bucket fucking holder. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the truth. The truth. Sutton brought the attitude to Blackburn. Sutton, see when Sutton signed to win the league the first year? Shearer had been there the year before. Sutton mm. brought the attitude. Shearer was copying him. And then mm. he got an ego too big for his own boots. Trust me. Mm. I'm- Alan Shearer followed out with Bellamy was because Shearer watched his crown slip off him, same way mm-hmm. he did with Sutton. He knew, I'm mm-hmm. the top, I'm the top. I'm, what do you mean I'm not? Well, he, ooh, I don't like it. Oh, we'll create a rivalry there. Sounds familiar. Although, my, you know, whatever crown ain't shaking here right now, you know, I don't mm-hmm. want a baseball cap back to front, front to back, whatever you want to call it. I enjoy swinging about. But, you know, none of that's, none of that's shaking. But jealousy mm-hmm. is a thing in football. Any any yep. realm of football <laughs> on the pitch, off the pitch, and in, 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 you know, podcast. Right. But rest assured, one thing: Alan Shearer doesn't like people. Mm-hmm. What's the word? Usurping is that how you pronounce it? Usurping them, and I think mm-hmm. usurp like you. Oh fuck! I know what I'm saying. But yeah, anyway, okay. I'll take Bellamy, you. <laughs> Bellamy was basically getting a hell of a lot of hype. Because mm-hmm. he was now was. contributing as much, if not more, than an injury-prone Shearer. Yep. Shearer doesn't like that. No. Bellamy has more attitude than Shearer. Shearer's mm-hmm. king of the dressing room, captain, king of Newcastle, etc. Yep. Shearer doesn't like that. Shearer has the Barry Ferguson effect. Yeah, that's a good point. If Ferguson right? can sack Paul Le Guin, right? Shearer can get rid of a weird date like Bellamy. But the mm-hmm. best bet is Bellamy was on tour. I think, I think it was Ireland. I am sure it was. They went for a friendly, mm-hmm. and it was over there. Bellamy was just showing the rest of the Celtics. We're going to talk to him. He's a tosser. <laughs> what do you want me to send him? <laughs> yeah, fucking wanker. Uh, right, but he would, I think mm-hmm. Bellamy was a signing that would have been available. Yeah, could have got him earlier. At I Rivaldo that. time. Oh I believe my it. God. Yeah. That fallout has got to a stage. He's been punted out on loan to anyone and Every, everyone, anyone that uh, would be <laughs> would, would take him for a reason. That's yeah. not came out of nowhere. That's brewed right. where it's got to a mm. stage Newcastle can no longer actually deal with it. Right. Like Shiro's always going to win. We should have been all over that that summer, oh and God. it should be a permanent yeah. signing. Hi, Henrik Larson leaving as we went back to earlier mm. was befitting of a permanent replacement. Now, no one yes. would have liked it being Bellamy because he's not got the class. He's not got that. What he would have proven, though, in that season was the ability. We went, it's fine. He might be a prick, unlike Henrik, but mm. look what he's doing on the pitch. Yep, exactly. Could back it up, but uh, again, again, the people in the chat um, now these believe <laughs> that we hear that story there. So Russell's very well versed on uh, no, the, the shenanigans of uh, Alan Shearer. Too much, too much, too many stories by yeah. ex-footballers. Too many stories. Don't, don't get wrong. I imagine a personality like Bellamy and Graham Sooners probably wouldn't have meshed well together, but uh, Shearer's definitely. <laughs> definitely, Graham definitely Sooner, yeah. You tell me, Graham Sooners wants to give Celtic Bellamy. Uh, that's a good point. Yes, I but, exactly. Let's get real here. <laughs> that, that's yeah. how bad it I, is. If if Sooners is, he's probably phoned Rangers and went. Any chance on another thirty grand? And Aye. like Rain's like, no, all our money's went on 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 the manager. I mean, uh, Barry Ferguson coming back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but again, it's all of those reactive signings which we've talked about before, and that's all because like, Ferguson. They've got, the they've got wind. They've got wind. They got wind. Ferguson was going back to Rain's. Yeah. That was going to steal yeah. every newspaper headline column, and mm-hmm. potentially, you're looking at that going, "That's a league changer," mm-hmm. which actually turned out to be. Unfortunately, it was. Unfortunately, and could I could just case. say, but, huh? I felt like Barry Ferguson or not, fucking unbelievable footballer. And the reason Celtic reacted because whether we hate him or whether we don't, Celtic reacted because they knew not just the headlines, 
Rangers are about to sign a shit hot footballer again at 26 years old. Who cares? Aye. Aye. But it shouldn't Who? be that way where we're reacting to things. It needs to be proactive. That's one of the, again, history repeating itself. We talk about it all the time. Was, was Craig Bellamy more available 30 days after the 1st of January than he was on the 1st? I could have easily got him. Was he, was he more available on the 31st of January at midnight than yep. it would have been on, on New Year's Day? I find it hard to believe. When the relationship's that yep. fraught, oh, come on. Yep. This is what this is what people need to remember. Yep. And that's why you always keep your eye on the board. Oh, yep, keep your eye on the board. Now, obviously, Bellamy comes in. Yeah, he was a bit cocky, perhaps brazen and gallus, but he certainly was good. He had that X factor, that thing you need in a player, someone who can win you a game on his own. Bellamy, was that? Is there anything wrong with having a few arrogant no. players? We've said Henry Glass had well. a bit of arrogance on him, so there's well, something and all that. Yeah, Hartson yeah. came up with a worse reputation. Hartson came up with a far worse reputation than Bellamy. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Kick Kyle in the, yeah, was in the toilet. He was in Coventry, who'd just been relegated. Yeah, that's right. His reputation was doing the pan. See if he hadn't scored two goals past Andy Gorham at Old Trafford for Coventry, even though they ultimately lost the game. But big fat Andy Gorham, you know, which he was at Man United by this point. Like he, like for a goalkeeper, come on. Like his yes, like he'd been at Motherwell, Phil. Mm-hmm. That's Motherwell right. in tracky yeah. bottoms. Right. See when you're in the English Premier League and track it, jogger bottoms, right? <laughs> right, right. Right. It's that Hungarian goalkeeper that played for Phil. Oh, the guy's an athlete, right? This yeah. is not about. I'm not being a cunt, mate. I'm not doing the shaming thing. Don't take it that way. That's not my point. I'm talking about EPL. Look at him. He's yeah. put, put the ball in the corners. <laughs> put the ball in the corners. <laughs> so you need to. He's not yep. getting to it. His reactions close to him will be good because that's naturally in him. Put the ball in the corners. 38 year old Andy Gorham at Man United. Like you're taking the piss. I mean, quite amazing. Well, he must have been the Aaron Moy of goalkeepers in the EPL. They're fucking jobs for the boys, isn't it? Uh, but, Aaron Moy, but no, sorry, big, mate, you know, big bad John. Big yeah. bad John. No, I always find a way. Big bad John, though, his reputation was in the gutter mm-hmm. as a bad boy when he joined Celtic. Right. Sutton. Had been the guy who the year before had rejected England's uh, call up for the mm-hmm. B team to and literally told his exact words to Glenn Hoddle, he phoned him himself. Glenn Hoddle didn't phone him, Sutton phoned Glenn Hoddle. For those <laughs> who haven't watched the Chris Sutton show, go oh. fuck yourself. Come on, Glenn, you're better than that. <laughs> Aye, Glenn, go fuck yourself if I'm oh. in the B team. So if you think Bellamy was carrying any more baggage than that, yeah. no. No. But his relationship was fraught. It was done. Mm-hmm. Had Rangers not seen Barry Ferguson, would O'Neill still have got his man Bellamy? No. no. I no. disagree. Uh, that is disgusting. Does he bear thinking about Because what would they have done then? That window is bad enough, that summer window. But yeah, see, Bellamy comes in. He bags his first goal in a cup game against Clyde, but it's obviously well remembered for the sledging he was doing throughout the game where. He was telling Clyde players at set pieces like, my gardener yeah. earns more than you and stuff like that. Which... Uh, by the way, <laughs> it, turns out, it turns out, it turns yep. out, uh, Neil Lennon and stuff have been doing for years. There you go, aye. As so how come before, that never gets reported? But the King well, Bell, I remember people outraged at that time. It was like, how arrogant to him? It's, and called, it's, like... it's called sledging. sledging. But do you, know what, do you know what I loved about that Celtic squad? They were doing it to the, their own. Mm. Right? So Sutton's turning around to Cy Ferry going, Aye, and remember, you know, when you're at McDonald's, make sure my daughter gets extra chips and a Happy Meal, because that's where you'll be. Your ability is yep. not there. And Neil Lennon used to stand there going, "What are these guys doing here? Are they here for a free day? Are they just, are they just here for a free day at training?" <laughs> and he goes, "The pressure they were putting on folk." Oh. But of course, Craig Bellamy does it, and it's he's the uh, worst guy in the world. The dad in the D one, but he's handing them the mail, and then he's like, "This will be handy when you're working at the Royal Mail at Christmas." <laughs> Stuff like that, it's incredible the some of the stories you hear about it. But, but Cy Ferry, yeah. Cy Ferry yeah. deserves so much credit for that, Phil. Yep. Very quickly, Monty's a huge champion of this show these he days, is. by the way. Yes, he, is he stood up for us, Phil, against utter drivel. So I just want yep. to when he wants a, a wee mark of respect for someone called Paul McConville, who ran the random thoughts blog. I'm more than happy to do that on the bus. Nice one, Monty, for bringing it up. It's I wouldn't have not, not known that. 
Mm. And uh, yes, a huge shout out to Paul McConville and his whole family. Mm, yes, indeed. Now, uh, Sorry, on you go. No, no, that's fine. I, that's I'm fine. taking over now, mate, because I get so wound up by these. Oh, these I've stuff. really wound you up, man. I really have. So calm, deep breath, deep breath. Let's I talk know, about Bellamy, the good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about all the good stuff, mate. So Craig Bellamy, I say, he gets his first goal against Clyde in a cup game. We blow him away 5 0. Gets some goals in league games against Hibs and Inverness Cali Faso. But then, of course, along comes the game that he is very widely remembered for. We go up to Tannadice and have an absolute ding dong battle, a humdinger, Russell. Three two beat them in the end. He scores one of the most perfect hat tricks you will ever see. Every goal was absolute top notch. The first one, you know, he cuts off, he peels off into the right channel. It's played into him. Just takes a touch to himself, and it is like a rocket into the keeper's uh, far corner. The second goal is into the channel again on the other side. He runs on the left. He basically looks up, takes one touch essentially, which is just chipping the keeper. He doesn't break his stride. He just runs onto the ball and one chip lobs the goalkeeper who just stands there watching it going over him. And the set, the third goal, the hat trick one, is uh, Robert Douglas with a long punt up the park. Chris Sutton, classic knock on header by Chris Sutton. Uh, steadies himself with a chest. Intelligent. Intelligent. Every header. one of those flick ons was so deliberate. Yeah. People think, target man, pump nope. it up and get. Sutton was different. That's why Henrik respected him because he went, oh, wow. Mm. He fucking knows where I'm going. Everyone yeah. sat in bed, the angles. Look at the goals he scored from in front of a mm. rear post. Those angles are hard. Yep. If you're a snooker player, they're cutback pots. Mm. He's doing that with his head with a ball going at a fucking million miles an hour at him. Sutton's flick-ons for Bell. I think Bellamy went, now I get it. No wonder that big bastard takes you. <laughs> You're the perfect foil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great, I mean, the header say, like, Robert Douglas goes along with it. He heads it on right into the path again, doesn't break his stride. He takes one touch off his chest, steady himself, and with the outside his right foot, just basically just pokes it past the goalkeeper into the far corner. And it's just a great hat trick. But that second goal in particular, the lob, is just phenomenal because he doesn't have to break his stride or nothing. Runs into the left channel and just with one touch, just over the goalkeeper, and then we beat them 3-2 on the day. It's an absolute humdinger of a battle. Obviously, he scores a winning goal in the Scottish Cup semi-final against Hearts. And, of course, he's also remembered for a very Marco Van Basten-esque volley against Aberdeen in a 3-2 win from an acute angle. Stupid. Volleys Stupid it back thing. across the goal into the far corner of Marco Van Basten-esque, just like the Euro 1988 final. Uh, an astounding goal. But of course, there is the game against Rangers. We're coming into the running. There's five games to go. To go to five games to go. Petrov puts his ahead at, the, at Ibrooks, but his goal where he's as Kiriakos, it's a Greek defender, isn't it? He's basically Scott one on one with him. Can just foul us, honestly. <laughs> that he was a oh, just like, no. he, he was, was. But you know what? He was old school. He was he would he was one of those players that I reckon at times. Can we be honest? Mm -hmm. I think he, he knew the arts. Oh, yeah, the, the street line and, of dark And arts. sometimes our defenders knew, you know, big Johan for Rohan knew how to do that in the day. Varga mm. knew how to do that. Yeah. Like, we don't kid ourselves on that. But Kyrgyakos, you knew when he got, once he had the ball at his feet, I mean, fuck me, he, had, he did have two banana boat left feet. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Both of them left and both of them bananas. You know, he, well, he's mm. got an A chance. But I think he shackled pretty well. But cream rises to the crop, Phil. It does, it does. I the, the goal that Craig Bellamy scores, so he just kind of wrong foots him and takes me set to the side of oh, his yeah. right foot and bends it round. Uh, Stefan, it was Vatteris and goal, into it? Stefan Kloss is away at this point. It's Ronald Vatteris that was the goalkeeper and um, EBT. Or, uh, EBT. and uh, puts his two now up. And then uh, Rangers do get a goal back late on, I think, in the game. But we end up winning the 2-1. And at that point, with four games left, we are five points in front of the league. But we will come and back to what happened a little bit later on. But that's the... And Craig Bellamy's collar. Yeah, I st I thought it was cut, but you reckon he's tucked it in? Uh, it's not cut off. Okay. It, so the, the collar is nylon. Yep. As opposed to, when you look at the... See the retro strip, like maybe I'll wear every now and then of Celtic. Mm -hmm. It's a, I think it's polyester, you would like collar. It's mm. thick material. This Celtic strip was the, the collar was the same material as the rest of the, the, the shirt. Mm. So he folded it in 
But, right. Like, right, right, right. So he folded it in. So because the underside of it was black and it would be flopping about, and it does look a bit shit. See yeah. the colours, you actually see moments in Hearts in that season. Hearts obviously doesn't care, respect. But mm -hmm. his is just flopping about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a bit like I think even Henrik would have went, Oh, come on, guys, this needs to be a bit better. Like <laughs> Henrik probably put blue tack under his you remember yeah. the remember the white kit with the green stripe mm -hmm. that we were Indeed. we were loving, we were loving on nostalgia. That somehow never fluttered when Henrik wore yeah, it. And I go, okay. I'm like Henrik, you fucking like oh, that God. stapled or something. You were fucking, and I think Bellamy's went. This is annoying me at flapping about. Mm. So he folded it right in. It looked like a round neck Celtic shirt, but it wasn't. Yeah, right. He okay, definitely I'll... never cut it off. He Aye. definitely never cut it off. He folded Aye. it in. Just how shit it looked made it look like it was quite rough around the edges. That's why I always thought it was cut. He but that's what he did. He that's what I'm he telling did. you, man. I'm telling oh. you, that's what he did. Okay. But oh. it's funny that. That for whatever reason gives a player an edge, or, or, or is like, if not an edge, a distraction. If not done, mm -hmm. interesting. That. Like Cantona with the collar up. Yeah, collar up. Obviously, Josh Cadet done that. I know collar up. But it creates a persona. And, and Cadet wore long sleeves but rolled them up. Why not just mm -hmm. wear a short sleeve shirt, Cadet? Aye. Thierry Henry with the socks that go over the knees. He just lifted the sock up to where he didn't do the fold at the top of the sock. He just pulled them up till they were over his knees. David Beckham must have worn a short sleeve shirt. Maybe you could count on one one hand for Man United. Mm -hmm. The rest That's of the right. time, a long sleeve shirt. Long sleeve shirts. It's all Aye. deliberate. It's Aye. all deliberate. It's wee mental things. Yeah. Not because they're thinking of it enhances my game. Aye. Superstitions, I'm guessing. Yeah. I or we things that irritate you go, no, I'm better when that's not like that. Remember the, the governor, Paul Lentz, always used to put his shirt on as he walked out the tunnel and he'd always be last in the line. That was always his superstitions. Paddy Vieira. Paddy Vieira. The, the of, uh, Vaseline. Vic, Vic's vapor rub. Vic's vapor rub, I mean, that can't, you can't think you look cool there. Huh? And you can't be getting that much from it during the game. Unless you're like... You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, but it's all it's, it's all up there, and he probably knew it looked unique. Aye, it does. It's you. You think it's about your head. Thing, you think. Mad, but um, I, I could be with the caller turned in and say, but what a player he was, and I say we'll come back to. I say he's done everything he can up to that point, scoring the winner at Ibrox. He's put us in a really good position to go and win the league. But I say we'll get back to that in a wee minute now. Russell, I need to ask you, mate. What were you thinking? Now I know obviously the timeline is the announcement comes after the last league game, but did you feel that the writing was on the wall? Did you? Did it surprise yeah. you when Martin... No, no. No, no I'm the no. same. I'm the same. I, I felt think, like it was I, the I end. Think for me, I think for me, the, the wife stuff, I will never, ever, ever underestimate because none of us know how that would feel. Uh -huh. Totally. I also think he'd been dealing with it concurrently for a spell already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was the reward worth the forfeit of not spending that time no because celtic made it so mm -hmm. so he yeah. went fuck this i would rather be caring for my wife i've been caring for her but i'm also doing a job i'm undervalued in underrepresented in under cared for under in fact does any of them even remember who i am go let the fans sing my name <laughs> and yeah. i just think that was all getting undervalued and he, his wife's needs then became far more prevalent and maybe gave him a shot in the arm and he went, do you know what, there's so much more to football. They think yeah. there's more to football. They think their bank balances and their bonuses are more to football. Well, my wife's certainly more to football, more than football. And Definitely. he did it. No one can ever criticise Martin Neal for that decision, no. ever. It didn't take me by surprise when the announcement came because you just felt it. Like Egyptian like, Casey and Neil definitely looked burnt out. I felt the team in general looked burnt out, but that was also that Neil was also was... by design because a bad investment right. over the years. It was like there's a reason why the team looked burnt out because they, it was... they put a fire extinguisher over his fire, Aye. and eventually, Aye. you know, if you keep holding the fire extinguisher to a guy Fox bonfire, it will go out, mm -hmm. and it well, went out. 
Aye, so it was announced after the final league game um, that he would be stepping down at the end of the season. Of course, we would still have the Scottish Cup final to play. And of course, on June the 1st, after the two days after the Scottish Cup final, three days, it was announced that Gordon Strachan would be taking over. Again, that's another story for another time. But of course, all this happened to say after the season ended, we've been putting it off long enough, but we need to now talk about it. We need to talk about the conclusion. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that word, the H word. What went wrong? Obviously, well, this could be this could be a long one. So I break it down for anybody who was living under a rock. First of all, I'm jealous if you were living under a rock through this and didn't experience it because it's a it's a horrible, horrible day. But following the victory over Rangers and going five points ahead with four games to go, it was now Celtic's title to lose. We've been hitting miss for the season, but it looked like we would do just enough to get over the line and win another title for Martin. Because again, we've not been great, we stumbled, but we've done just we enough. Are stumbling. Mm. It's so synonymous with the transfers, eh? Now we've really done this show. It really is. It's, it's, so, it's so synonymous, like mm. peaks, troughs, yes. underwhelming moments. It's yep. so fucking mentally, folk don't think recruitment's the most important thing in football. That's mm. true. Recruitment is. So, so true. Do you ever think the manager's the most important thing? Yeah. The managers are relevant if you're not recruiting right and you're not backing them. The yeah. manager is rendered irrelevant. That will prove the case, by the way. If Postacoglu is left with a net spend the same again this summer as what it was this summer. Yeah, got to strain for fishing and strength. It's not I difficult to understand. For, I'm just, it's all right. It's really Calm. striking me. It's really yeah. striking me the way it's like... <laughs> I don't understand. It, is, it, is, it does evoke some, some memories when you look back and you see how freakishly similar a lot of things are. But here's something that was quite mad about this. The, the record against between Celtic and Rangers this season after, because at this point we've now played them four times in the league, we've played them in both cups. Celtic have won twice in the league and Rangers won twice in the league. We've both won at each other's ground as well. We've beat them at Ibrox, they've beat us at Celtic Park and we've also won a home game each. We knocked them out the Scottish Cup, they knocked us out the League Cup. So it's literally three apiece in terms of record against. But I say we've now played them. We don't need to play them again. We've now got... We've, we've done the hard work of going to Ibrox and winning. Put us in a great position. But we follow up with a home game against Hibs and lose 3-1. Gary O'Connor, Ivan Sproul and future Celtic captain, leader and legend Scott Brown did the damage to us that day. So Rangers once again close the gap to two points with three games left. However, Celtic get, get victories. The Hibs yeah, game is a crucial. Great point. It is, well it said, Alistair. Well it said, mate. Yep. And the irony of how there's always a Celtic link. There is Scott well, Brown's there's future. Two. There's yeah. two in this story that well, really yeah. come back and bite. Two Scots. And it's Isn't two players funny? that give us some wonderful memories mm -hmm. after this yeah. in Celtic jerseys. Both signed by Gordon Strachan in the same window as well. Who didn't give a fuck Aye. who he was Aye, signing them from. Yep. Hey, do you know what he said, Phil? In the words of James English, see when he found see when he looked back at Scott McDonald and what he did. Yep. As Jim English said, he went, you know the one. Nobody cares, Nobody mate. fucking cares, mate. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> fucking cares. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. what he's, but you sign the players on the merit mm -hmm. they deserve. Mm -hmm. But the um, the next few games, we've got Aberdeen, we've got a trip to Tynecastle, but we get through them. We get the maximum points here, and it's like we've kept Rangers at arms. If it's the last day of the season, we are two points in front. We've done just stuff. It's a case of just go to Morrowell. We've got nothing to play for as it stood and just win. And that's a better Rangers results and you've won the league. It can't be that hard. I mean, as we've we've won through the season, but we're, 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 we're in touching distance. And, and they were so close. And they were men, Phil. They, what? They, they, they had the know-how. They had the experience. Mm -hmm. you, if, if folk bet their mortgage on them, you would say, fair. Yeah. It's you all too. Martin O'Neill. This team of, as we've already said, over 30s, they've got the know-how. They've got the knack. The only reason we didn't win it was, remember, we got beat on goal difference because we took the yeah. team to Seville, right? Mm -hmm. That's why. The only reason we didn't win the league once. Uh, the rest of the time, Alex Cruz's team got destroyed. Mm -hmm. I know it's got closer, but that's the Henrik effect. The rest of those boys, they're men. It's the job's done. We ain't dropping, two, we ain't dropping points in two games, Phil, at this point. No, nah, definitely not. 
Definitely, or you can't. Even, we've been over the hill enough times with this team. You just to back them. They'll go and get it done. They'll just finish this off. It's been a bit, you know, they've limped over the line essentially, but they've done it. They'll do it. It'll, there's nothing can go wrong. So Celtic travel to Motherwell. Rangers will travel through Edinburgh to play Hibs. And the other fixture as well, which I don't think is any bear. I know there's some Celtic fans out there that say fucking Hibs didn't do us any favours because this game had an effect on them. Was hard to they start Aberdeen. passing the ball about, don't they? They do, they do. At the end of the day, we can't be relying on other teams to do as a favour. No, we just did our I, job. That's you know? a winning mentality, Phil, and I'm glad you said that. Yeah. But but I thought I would go with that. So Hearts are playing Aberdeen in the other game, and if Aberdeen win by a certain number of goals and Hibs lose, then Aberdeen will pip Hibs to third place. But, say, so yeah, I'll go through the state of play. So state of play at kick-off, Celtic were top by two points ahead of Rangers. Hibs were third on 61 points with a plus eight goal difference, which would made it pretty much certain they'd get a UEFA Cup spot unless Aberdeen absolutely battered Hearts. And then again, knowing Hearts, if they know that Hibs can get screwed over, you just never know. But uh, Hibs lost, he- if he- Hibernian lost heavily to Rangers. Aberdeen sat on 58 points with a plus three goal difference. Hearts and Murrow effectively had nothing to play for. Things started well for Celtic. They were up from it from the start. Uh, but for some reason, Motherwell's goalkeeper, say Gordon Marshall, who was a bit of a clown a couple of seasons before against this, he was saving everything. Craig Bellamy was and for one. us. Aye. And for us. Ah, he was terrible for us. He, he was terrible for us. Most terrible. importantly, in the 90s. Aye. Oh, he was a dreadful <laughs> goalkeeper. I was awful, awful. But after uh, Motherwell's resistance for the first 30 minutes, Chris Sutton is on hand to put us ahead. Just after the half hour break, um, it was a save from Marshall that rolled back out to him. And it's a slide tackle finish from Chris Sutton. Slides it into the net. Puss is 1 0 up. Aberdeen led 2 0 early in the second half in their game, but Hibbs were still tied 0 0 with Rangers as they neared the hour. But as the way things stood, you know, nothing changed in the league. National Oval gives Rangers the lead at Easter Road, but as it still stood at that point, Celtic were still champions. Uh, Rangers would be waiting on the most dramatic of turnarounds at Murrow, and it seemed Hibs would be safe as Aberdeen just didn't seem to be adding to their score against Hearts. Meanwhile, Celtic were throwing everything at Murrow, but like what we saw in 2003, they were up against a team who wanted to frustrate us. Time waste, and I say Gordon Marshall seemed to be in the form of his life, playing the pantomime villain. Um, John Hartson and I believe Craig Bellamy in particular were denied by Bellamy I'm sure was in one on one and had a chance to put it away he saved it and I think John Hartson had like a pure good reaction he got a good reaction save him from close range and like just felt to him and pulled off a blind save he's like where was all this in the 90s Gordon Marshall where stupid. was this it's getting silly by this point he's now right. decided he's David Marshall at the new camp <laughs> no <laughs> Gordon I... Marshall at 38 years old at Fur Park <laughs> yep <laughs> Fucking nuts, man. <laughs> ah, he's, again, you're watching, on? you're like, I can't believe this is happening, but we're still 1-0 up. Murrow aren't even threatening us at all. We're going into the dying embers of the game, last five minutes or so, and then it happened. Murrow will throw a bit of caution to the wind, and it's, it's from every right, Scott McDonald sort of hooks it over his shoulder, he has his back to goal, Flex. and, oh. It and deflects on someone's back, and it goes, loops over. It's not like a, that was the it's winning like, goal. That was the second one. The first one, he's got his back to goal and kind of just hooks it over his shoulder. Sure but that the was winning goal. Deflected. You sure that wasn't deflected? The winning goal, they break on a counter and it deflects or something because Jerry Britton was no, running into the back post to try and score. Sure. I'm not giving him that. Nah, I'm not giving nah. him that with just a direct goal. No, no, no. I think it was deflected still, even that. Aye. I wait, watch it. Back. Might tell us. If they want to tell us, you don't need to, well, well, but if you want to tell us. Let's call it deflected, man. Okay. Cool, but basically, the bottom line is Murrow will get an equaliser with about three minutes Which left. Which costs us clock. anyway, doesn't it? It would have cost. If we drew the game, we would have lost it it's anyway. Still lost because, the yeah, we would have lost on goal difference like we did two years before. So uh, we were in a position for two two times out of three years to lose on goal difference. But then uh, I guess even worse because they break, I believe, from our corner. And I say that one definitely deflects. I remember Jerry Britton, he could have scored the second goal. He's running in at the back post to try to get a tap in, but it dips in at the back post before he gets there. And it was like, you just, I, I'm, I can remember my emotion, my reaction watching it. And it's like, I can't actually believe that's just happened. Like, I, I can't find the words at the time. I just watched it. I was just stunned silence. Like, I wasn't like raging or anything. I didn't get up and have like a fit or anything, like kicking things. I just was like, I can't actually believe what's just happened. Like, how on earth have we just managed to lose this in the last five minutes of the season? Mental. <laughs> Absolutely fucking nuts, Russell. Oh. How do you yeah. describe it? I think the silence says it all. 
It was, um, I think, to be totally honest, it was worse than the two years before. Agreed. Agreed, yeah, because we gave everything that one it's two years terrible. before, coming like, back was, off of you. For I also think it was the end of a cycle. It was, yeah, it was everything I that think, was the end of a cycle. I think we all knew that deep down. Yep, we did. Whereas chosen three, have it be, have it, had it been topped up, mm -hmm. that would have been good. Yep. It wasn't topped up. And then it got to this stage two years later where you went, well, now they are done. They're knackered. And what's happened is at the last hurdle, they've fallen, which we all mm -hmm. probably could have preempted. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Obviously, hindsight's a wonderful thing. It's a gift that we're all given. But I, I, I found this one, and then obviously, you, you know, the news comes out straight away. Not that Martin O'Neill's leaving in the showers, not that Neil Lennon's joining the showers, but Martin O'Neill is leaving. Yeah. Fucking horrible. I Horrible, was... you know, and and it's one of those ones where you knew change was afoot, and mm. deep down, no matter what change was, come summer two thousand and five, and I know we'll look at this at some point in nostalgia film. Yeah, yeah. I know you've yeah. got loads up your sleeve for nostalgia that'll be different from just going chronologically through the seasons. Yeah, yeah. But at some point there will be a summer oh five, and. <sighs> It's weird mm. because there was an underlying feeling. Now Hen it's not Henrik leaving, and it's not actually this time as much as it's massive Martin O'Neill's leaving. This summer we're about to enter is different. Mm -hmm. Everything's changed. This is a new force, and it's a Peter Lowell-driven force now that we yeah. weren't really aware of in the last couple of years, O'Neill. We didn't get that it was Peter Lowell because he was... He just wasn't as in the, in your face then. We didn't, And we didn't know that chief execs or, or whatever you want to call mm. these bastards are going to be so prominent. We just thought it was Martin O'Neill's Celtic. What you realise is this was the end of an era... Yeah, it's the end of Martin O'Neill month, more importantly. <laughs> it is, aye, aye. But I find that I really, really I, like, even now, like, you could just give a minute silence to it because this wasn't mm. how it was supposed to be no. for Martin. No, it, it, it should not have ended that way. But the thing that people got to understand is we didn't lose that league in the last five minutes of the season at Fur Park. We didn't even lose oh, it when we lost to Hibs a few games before. This was a series of events over the course of the season. And even going further back into the seasons before, where this mm -hmm. was a natural regression that was happening, and it caught up with us eventually. So, yeah, the black and white of people might look at the outside and go, you know, just be, lost it at the end. But Jinky would be one of those ones as well, where O'Neill goes, obviously, to Villa, finishes third, eh, sorry, sixth, Yes. Three times in a row, I meant to say that. I was going to say third six times in a row. Six, <laughs> three times in a row. When you take that into context, how difficult that is in English Premier League, mm -hmm. for a club that was on the brink of relegation when he took over, mm -hmm. do you think part of his, his job interview to get that, he goes, you have no idea what I've been up against. If you think you've got financial <laughs> disparity right now with the league, yep. you want to know what they were doing to me and asking me to compete in the Champions League. Just, no, I'm being serious. Though, I, like, I, I think, think so. I think it's I think made them better. O'Neill's, um, what he did at Villa, you know, obviously took the year out for his wife. God bless. I honestly love that. But I think what he went on to do at Villa initially for those three years prove he hadn't lost his touch. No, nope, definitely had. He hadn't ran out of steam. He went to a, diff a more difficult competition, actually competed in a higher echelon than he ever had. Mm hmm ever had at Leicester, yeah. he was taking on the big boys and beating them very quickly, by the way. First season, sixth. Mm -hmm. Second season, sixth. Third season, yeah. sixth. But challenging for the Champions League spots. And I think he was going... Aston Villa, mental. Like, <laughs> look how quick I did that in three years. Mm -hmm. These I... numpties up the road generally thought it was better off not backing me. Now watch what happens. And Strachan might have smirked but Strachan smucked through going, <laughs> even I've no idea how we've done that. Okay, brilliant yep. management. Strachan deserves all the credit. Yep. But Strachan 
I must have said this, you're you're stacking the odds against, mm -hmm. and the board have obviously went. We know this is yeah. part of the remit. Hi, I was literally told to. Um... Tragic way Celtic have fallen since then. Martin O'Neill, Martin O'Neill, I believe, mm -hmm. has the same message. Same message, Ange Postecoglou is told today's AGM. I think it's a good way to round up the mm -hmm. the Martin O'Neill month. Nice. Ange Postecoglou wants Celtic to be in the Champions League every year. He wants us to be more agile in mm -hmm. a transfer market. He feels we can compete in if we sell at the right time and then buy bigger. Mm -hmm. I yeah, don't I think, I don't think, I don't think Martin O'Neill's transfer strategy, whilst initially it had to be instant impact, necessarily mm. would have carried on being like that. When you actually look at the players he brought into Aston Villa, for example, they weren't all 29, 30, so they didn't need instant impact. Mm. Ashley Young, who signed him from Watford for £10 million? Pounds? He's actually back at Villa at 38 years old, having had spells at Man United, Inter Milan, winning trophies throughout. Martin O'Neill brought him to Villa. Did. James Milner. James Milner, yes. Who brought him to Villa? Martin O'Neill, from Leeds. Mm. Yep. Mika Richards, stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. I think, I'm sure that was you. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, in fact, with that one. No, I think he did. Anyway, even if not, Curtis, no, it wasn't Mika Richards. It was Curtis Sutton. Did he sign John Carew for Aston Villa, the big Norwegian striker? John Carew. John Carew signed. But oh, there was loads. Gareth Barry, he turned him into Gareth a midfielder. Yeah. A left back, a left centre half. Aye. He turned into the Rolls Royce midfielder. That's right. You know? Mm -hmm. Petrov, we all know. Why did yeah. he sign him? That was clever. But Martin O'Neill proved, mm -hmm. back me, I can supply. I can do this. Mm -hmm. It's a sad, sad end to, for me... Is. On reflection of the eight hours, nine hours we've discussed it, Phil. Yes. My favourite spell ever as a Celtic fan. Phenomenal, phenomenal time, phenomenal moments, memories, say it's what my, you that's achieved. My take on it. I agree. It's my it's... favourite time. Aye. We won't see a team as strong as that Celtic team for that era. That's an astounding Celtic side. The players, Larson, Sutton, Hartson, Petrov, Lambert, Lennon, all these guys, man, you won't see that level. Yeah, Celtic will always have a good team and stuff, but that team is in a different stratosphere. And I go on about how much I love the Brendan Rodgers era, and I really, really did, because I was a season dig older by that time. So going to games and watching the Invincible Treble was good. But again, Brendan Rodgers' team at its peak, wouldn't he beat Martin the Neal's team at its peak? It's like, wouldn't he? So for me, for me, Phil... It's just, it's so much about, yes, those big signings are the easy ones to associate with O'Neill, which I think people do conveniently because they want to call him the big spending manager. <laughs> but then I go, Bobby Petta, Didi Ega, yeah, right. Jackie McNamara, the guys he turned into fucking world beaters, mate. Turned Jackie McNamara and a club captain at Celtic, having utilised him as a ut utility player yes, for, for these first couple of years. But a gap, 35 grand, Bobby Pett on Ipswich Reserve, Stan Varga, Sunderland Reserve. He made players better the same way Brendan Rodgers did as well. And never underestimate that part. Right. That's such a big part of it all. Right. Martin O'Neill, for me, captured the binds. He got Celtic back to being a 60,000 mm -hmm. uh, full capacity stadium, yep. a 50,000 season ticket. Season holder stadium. Ronnie Dyla, his era nearly cost us that. Not just because of Ronnie Dyla. Yep. But do you know what? O'Neill took us from the darkness to the to the light. He made us believe again. And for that, those five years will be my favourite until something really special happens since. Mm. And it ain't happened. And it won't happen anytime soon, in my opinion. Oh, definitely not. Definitely won't see it happening. But just a wee quick wrap up on this. Obviously, he talked about a minute silence. Well, it seems as the story goes, there was a, a serious prolonged silence in the Celtic dressing room following that game. I think it's on the official DVD and Martin Rio talks about it. It says he was literally just like sort of like that squatted down thing that he does, but he's like thinking, didn't say anything for ages. None of the players sat there, they just sat heads down, said nothing. Nobody could find the words in the, the Fur Park dressing room. But, of course, we did still have one more piece of business that season. Now, contrast, because you went back and watched last week's show, Russell, the O three O four one, and I said to Jonathan and I said to Liam, I feel like I that it. Scottish Cup win, the O four one, 
felt as big as and on a par with winning the league because of how special it was and it was Henrik's big send-off. But this is Martin Neal's send-off, but Jesus Christ, know, the contrast was stark. Because Henrik removed the emotion. Henrik reminded you why you loved him. Yes. We'd done all the emotion. Henrik went, oh, and by the way, I've got one more bit of business to do. Yes. Boom. Right. O'Neill, it was, oh, my God, we've not won the league. This is emotionally yeah. significant. More yeah. than significant on underplaying it. This is so important. So importantly significant. You... Yeah leave with the final trophy because we, we didn't deliver the big one. Yeah. And we did. Yeah, so it was far more emotional. Mm-hmm. Look at his stare in your uh, thumbnail on this mm-hmm. video. Yep. He's a man possessed, O'Neill, then. And yep. he's upset. Mm-hmm. He's upset even winning the Scottish Cup. Yeah. I, it was, what it a was, mentality, mate. I, it was consolation price. It was. But what a mentality. Uh, that is, well, it? totally, it's a winner's mentality because this is like... <laughs> It's a trinket, a mere trinket after what we lost he's out bailing. on. He's bailing, this is it. But he's also looking at you going, we've got something. But yeah. God, am I sorry I didn't deliver uh, what I thought. Yeah. I think that's the difference between elite. Because it, was, it, it like, wasn't a memorable... Way, I don't hmm. remember ever counting our opportunities uh, in the SPFL that year. I don't ever remember counting our shots on target in the Scottish Cup that season. I don't remember counting any of that in the, the, Europe, the Champions League campaign that we discussed earlier. Yep. Don't remember any of that coming to the light. All we spoke about today is the points we didn't win. That's it. Big difference, eh? That's a huge difference. But yeah, difference. wasn't it was it a memorable final? It's not one that was on memory, but Alan Thompson scores the winner early in the game, very Aye. early. Free kick from out wide under the wall, trademark Tomo. Uh, Chris Sutton did miss a penalty later on when he slipped and Martin O'Neill even ripped the piss. Uh, Martin O'Neill had type of one more joke on the step at Celtic Park, basically saying Chris Sutton won't be on penalties anymore. It was something along those lines. Uh, but yeah, we ended up winning the Scottish Cup. I say it was merely a consolation prize. But as we've said about the Celtic along the years, you know, when you make them angry, usually they come rolling back. And even after the change of a new manager for the 05 06 season, it's still going to end pretty well, but that's another story for another time. I will get to Gordon Strachan's first season somewhere along the way. Down the line. Years of nostalgia, yes, because I'll go right. back to now my sort of jumping around thing. Let's so, get to the quiz. Let's go. Yeah, we've got six more to go, Russell. So again, for anyone that came in late, Valga. question. You've said Valga already? Fuck. Right. right. But just for the benefit of anyone that came in late, the yeah, tight sorry. question was... Celtic have been drawn against Barcelona, AC Milan and Shakhtar a lot in Europe this century. Can you, however, name all the goal scorers against them across that time? There are 18 different scorers. Russell has got 12 on his own already. Fair play. Yeah, I've got a few, a couple more. But Chris, we don't lose titles under Ange. That's the difference, boys. Eh? One title in, mate. Well, one title in. That's, that's the big difference. This is... I, I hope you're... Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm confident like... about this one. I'm but confident I... this season, but... Well, right, okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Rogic. Yes, Rogic. Yes, indeed. When we went ahead. It, 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 it. This is a guess. I think El Yunusi, but it might be Renz I'm thinking of. El Yunusi did score against them at Celtic Park, yes. Against Milan? Yes, Milan. Right, so I'm picturing it. El Yunusi also scored against uh, Leo, you're about thinking about. Leo, you're thinking Leo, Leo. yeah. yeah. Well, who cares, he's in. Right, these are two just big names for the striking era. Mm-hmm. Vinegar. Literally the biggest name in football, like literally, Jan well, Vinegar. Yes, yep. Like. yep, that is the correct answer. Good. Barcelona, 2008 knockout stages. Don't remember that. Uh, really? Me, you remember the Barry Robson one, though, but very good. Yeah, Hesling scored the Barry Robson aye, because aye. I was just so chuffed for him. Aye. Uh, uh, very good Hesling opened the score that night. No. Good guess, though. How many have I got to go? You've got one, two, three to go, mate. You've done really well. You've done very, very well, mate. You know the comments are off. I swear my mother's life, they're all... Aye, like, I obviously. Huh? I'm good that way. Like, I generally am competitive that way. That's why I'm... No. Oh, fuck. Maloney? No. I don't want to get it to I'm just throwing names at but like... Yeah. Just think of the eras, you know? You've done really, really well so far with what you've got. Oh. 
a lot of people are putting comments in and it's like yeah, he's already getting it. At the start of the show, we done a few names just after the, the halfway point, we've done a few more names of rather course. than leave all 18 at the end. So a lot of the names that the guys are saying but it's are ones 18 that are really names, top. Phil. Do you know what I mean? What's a lot. Want it's you a to lot. Do? Exactly. How many more? Three. Three. Oh, this is tough, man. Okay, but I'll run a clue for one of them just now to just get this one. Give me a season. This season. This one's a bit of a technicality one, call it that. No, I'm not giving a tatty. Yeah, well, own goal no, slash a tatty. Got... All right, okay. No, uh, well, see, I put a tatty slash own goal, so that's yeah, a goal. No, I haven't included that one, so okay. I've got two to go. No offence, yeah. but I generally... No. No, that's fine. I had thought of that, but I was like, yeah. no, that's gonna that's gonna make me look like I'm being a dick. I think I think you were wrong to take it off him because the shot is goal bound. I thought when you look at it. Back. A... Oh, come on, oh, hey, do you know what? Happy clap, Phil. If you if, if you think <laughs> <laughs> where's Judge Kearney when you need him? Uh... That was a fucking clap back. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, as a goal in our favour against Shakhtar, so it does fall under the category. But yeah, it's own yeah, goal slash that's, a tatty if right. you want. But... Give, me a, give me a season. Okay, the other ones are 2007-2008. Jarisic? Yes, Jarisic. You missed him against Shakhtar. You got Donati. You didn't say Jarisic. Because he scored one. one. That thunder... That volley. The thunder Jarisic, of course. I love that yeah. volley. He showed his bit of class there. He ah. came again. Another one under Mourinho, I'm sure he would jo he joined he was, under. Uh, thank you, um, man. Like, that was a coup getting him. We all thought he was shite. What why? Because he's doing do you know how funny it's it's it, it's flipped because he wasn't Scottish and he maybe but if you watch Cy Ferry's interview about him, apparently he just didn't give a fuck. Eh? Apparently he was another <laughs> one. He was just in training going, why don't you just try and do that? Do that wee thing. And I was like, no, he got pelters for that. And Jarrett went, cares? Just fucking do it. I don't care. <laughs> well, Mo like Monty says, yeah, he had a sick, makes Moy look like Diddy or a gat. <laughs> <laughs> so when you tell me that Yarisic was at training going, nobody cares, mate. Nobody fucking cares. He was doing that James English. <laughs> if anyone's not seen James English, <laughs> the meme is incredible. To be clear, back to bar me. Whoever it is, nobody cares, mate. They fucking care. cares. <laughs> <laughs> See tonight, mate. Oh. Apparently, I've had pelters. But you know one thing I'll say, Phil? Always. Nobody <laughs> cares, mate. <laughs> See when twelve foot watch your show. Nobody <laughs> cares, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, would you like a final clue on the last I one? Because you will kick yourself when you realise who it is. Yeah, Nick. No. No, I'll not kick myself in. Oh, yeah. Era COVID season, Stephen Pierce. Oh, COVID. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stephen Pierce. Nay no fans, nay no fans were in the, the arenas to see oh. them. I don't know. I don't know. Then, Stephen Pierce. Oh, I don't know. Then. Oh, I don't know. You've got one of the ones from the, that, that night. Got... No, that was Leo. You're thinking about, and that he scored against uh, the home game, didn't he? Tumble. No. Come on, think. Think of that team. Think of that Lennon team. Who was the talisman of the team? Uh, Onsen Edward. Yes, Onsen Edward scored in the San <laughs> Remember when went 2 0 up? <laughs> uh, I remember Rogic scoring. Aye. Remember when we went 2 0 up? I actually were... thought, I thought it was Rogic and Elunusi that scored that. Uh, El Yunusi scored at home in the 3 1 loss, and we went 2 0 up in the San Siro and lost 4 2. Watson Edward. What I always remember about that game is we were wearing the the sort of mint green with the green shorts, but we had black socks on that night. I remember there's that That's as well because of really. a car clash. Yeah. Uh, if only uh, we'd thought of things like that, we went to play St. Mirren a few weeks ago. You know, we had different shorts and different socks because it was. Of course. But don't worry, we've got a yellow I'm and green kit coming soon anyway to nah, relieve that it. problem hey, against St. Mirren. See if that fourth kit comes out, it's the Australia <laughs> kit. We all know. Hey, so, but you know what? Hey. So a quick, a quick recap of all the goal scorers was Alan Thompson, Chris Sutton, Stan Varga, John Hartson, Scott McDonald, Stephen McManus, Gary Yarisic, Modenati, Jan Venegura-Hesselink, Barry Robson, Georges Samaras, Victor Wanyama, 
Tony Watt, Moel Yunusi, Tom Rogic, Odson Edward, Vio Itati slash an own goal, and Georgius Yakamakis. How would you rate uh, my performance for that? I think it was That was superb, mate. That was very, very, very good, right mate. Watch. I think you're in good stead ahead of Monday. I hope Jonathan, Jonathan sees that. Boy's like shaking in his boots. Shaking in his boots, mate. Uh, but that, well done, mate. So that is the end of the right. show. So, Russell, do you well, have to well, tell the people? What's going on next? Well, we, we, we've got the bus stop for all that shit, but I'm just going to say, going to the game tomorrow, Phil, I'll be meeting you. Yes, If anyone wants to meet us, just drop us a message. Uh, go, and I don't mean it like, oh, fucking stick £12 of VIP. It's my birthday weekend. I know a lot of you go to the games every week and respect mm -hmm. that. I'm going, it's not often I go, I go four or five times a season. It's, it's just the way it's always been. Um... I would love if anyone wants to say hello or wants to go for a beer, I'll buy it. If you're you're a boy to us, my pleasure to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, that's the crack. Drop us a message and yeah. he'll heal Phil. I enjoyed that yes. tonight. Yes, indeed. Um beware, and... beware of the noise. Don't mm -hmm. believe the truth. <laughs> No worries, mate. No worries at all. So, yeah, we're out of here, folks. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back on Sunday. We've got a plan. But, yeah, go watch the bus stop. More of it is explained there or what's coming up for the bus over the next week. But, yeah, we're out of here for now. So, uh, off for of Russell's uh, birthday celebrations this weekend, I'm sure it's going to get pretty messy. And I don't mean Leonel Messi. Anyway, catch you later, guys. Deliberately trying to, to cause contra controversy. Well, I work in the media now. And you've got someone sitting there next to you who's an embarrassment to the media profession. He's an apologist. He's a charlatan. He <laughs>